Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Arizona. Well, it's almost autumn here in the desert, so let's open up the roof. We are letting nature indoors here at Chase Field. Second of three games against the San Diego Padres. D-backs with a chance tonight to even a series in a game apiece as we are ready in just a moment or two to open up the roof at Chase Field. It's D-backs baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. And good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthune, Bob Brenly along the way. The second of a three-game series, the Diamondbacks and the Padres. Your pitching matchup tonight, Yolise Chassin going for the Diamondbacks and Tyson Ross for the Padres. Bob, so far for Yolise Chassin, two starts as a Diamondback. Pretty good results. Yeah, looked real good. Also looked good in his minor league assignment with the Diamondbacks. You know, you get to the month of September and you think a lot about next season if you're not in a pennant race and how are all these youngsters going to fit into the scheme of things next year. Well, Yolis Chassi, not exactly a youngster, but he's a guy that's pitching for his future with this organization. And so far, two really solid starts under his belt. 27 years old, coming off shoulder trouble all last year and earlier this year, and perhaps a part of the rotation next season. Tyson Ross, a key piece of the Padres rotation. Facing this guy can be like, well, a root canal. <laughs> I should know. Yeah, this guy's been tough on the D-backs this season. A wicked slider. He throws it a lot. He throws it for strikes. He leads hitters out of the zone with it. He will walk some guys. Diamondbacks, once again, need to be patiently aggressive against this guy and hope he makes some mistakes with that breaking ball. That big wipeout slider that's been a problem in the past. There is Tyson Ross getting set to start this ball game for the Padres. Yolise Chassin for the Diamondbacks. And the roof is opening up as we speak. A time to shine for the youngsters. More on that. Then it's first pitch, the D-backs and the Padres on Fox Sports Arizona.
will you live the gig life? By Lone Butte Casino, you're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Jack in the Box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with melted garlic herb butter. Welcome back uh, to Chase Field, a beautiful night for the ball game. As the roof is open here at Chase Field, as the Diamondbacks look for a different result in this game two against the San Diego Padres, I'm Kate Longworth. Well, if you tuned into the end of last night's game, you may have paused a moment and looked at the calendar. No, it's still September, but it looked a little like spring training as a lot of new D-backs, new faces, rising stars, got a chance to get out there and try to impress their skip. And here's what he had to say. It's not that easy to do when you sit and sit and sit and don't get the game reps that they're, they're not getting. So I think they've done a nice job. Um, you know, we know their talent level. We know what they have, and, and we trust what we, our player development people say. So the only thing they don't have is some of the guys who've been here all year when we start to evaluate the team for next year is major league reps. And major league reps are important because you obviously get to learn the league and you have something that we can kind of grade you on. And Brandon Drury trying to get that play time to impress his new skit. Last night he got his first RBI in the Diamondbacks uniform. Tonight he's hoping for more of the same in the lineup batting six. Trying to get through to San Diego Padres' Tyson Ross. We've got first pitch on the other side. Stay with us. Evening here in the Valley, Brandon Drury, the rookie, getting a start for Chip Hale's ball club tonight. The skipper said after last night's loss, his Diamondbacks were embarrassed by the performance as a team and as a group, and he is sure that they will bounce back. They always have. That is certainly the expectation for tonight against the San Diego Padres, who have not won a series here at Chase Field in a little over two years. So the Diamondbacks trying to prevent that from happening. Over the next two games. BB, we are uh, open for business here on a gorgeous night. Boy, this is the way we love it. You start the season with the roof and panels open. You finish the season with the roof and panels open. Uh, obviously, it needs to be closed up in the summertime, but this is how we like this ballpark the best. Well, we'll get a look at Yolis Chassin for the Diamondbacks, your Arizona Ford starting pitcher. He's looked good so far as he comes back from shoulder trouble following his release from the Rockies in spring training. Tonight, his third start on the come comeback trail as a Diamondback, and his manager is Chip Hale. And he's proven to, you know, us now in the two starts, we've seen him, what he'd proven to our minor league people. 
that he's his stuff is back. His velocity may not be where it was before, um, but he was a solid pitcher for the Rockies. And so he's a guy to take a look at and continue to let um, get in some starts and see what we think about for next year. You know, at least just seen he's made two starts with the D-backs and has pitched into the seventh inning in both of them, giving up just two earned runs each time. Yeah, one against the St. Louis Cardinals. He went six and a third, gave up six hits and two earned runs in that game, left when the game was tied at two, took the loss in that one, and then the second start was against the Oakland Athletics. Seven innings, five hits, two runs in that game. He also left with the score tied 2-2, but got the victory in that one. And he throws strike one to Will Myers. Alfonso Marquez, our plate umpire tonight. We are underway. Myers 270 and seven homers. He got that seventh home run leading off last night's ball game against Jeremy Hellickson. And you're right about the Diamondbacks and Chip Hale saying that uh, everybody was embarrassed by that loss last night. They have been able to bounce back after those ugly, embarrassing losses. The, the idea moving forward is to minimize those ugly, embarrassing losses. Well, he is a uh, he and his staff are all about accountability. But uh, sometimes there's no point in dwelling on anything. It's foul by Drury a third. Gary Gagne has it right there. Gary working left field tonight. Take a look at the lineup for Pat Murphy, San Diego Padres. Will Myers will play first base tonight. Jan Hervey Solarte at third base. Matt Kemp out in right field. Justin Upton in left field. Jed Jerko at shortstop. Corey Spangenberg at second base. Austin Hedge is the youngster getting a start behind the plate. Tyson Ross on the mound batting eighth. And center fielder Travis Jankowski batting ninth. Well, a little different start for Will Myers tonight. The homer last night. Jacine gets him to chase that one for the strikeout. Ooh, nasty slider right there. I talk all the time about leading a guy out of the strike zone. That was a great example right there. That looked like it was going to be on the outer third of the plate in the zone. Ended up low and away out of the zone. On away for Jan Hervey Salarte. In there at third base again tonight. Bounce to first. Goldie. Jacine covers and very quickly. Two down. Right fielder, number 27, Matt Kemp. Here's Matt Kemp. Well, this guy has been extremely efficient, professional. He's just been a solid big league pitcher so far. Very poised under the circumstances, you know, probably pitching for his baseball future somewhere, whether the, with some Diamondbacks or another team, and uh, he has been cool calm collected customer out there. He will and can hit the open market as a free agent this winter. Matt Kemp 268 and 21 homers. Kemp is third in the league in RBIs right behind Goldie. And quite a contrast already for Yolise Chassin after Jeremy Hellickson's 37 pitch five run first inning last night. One and one. And Chip said today, had it been earlier this year, we probably would have had Jeremy Hellickson go back out there trying to pitch a couple of more innings and salvage something. But at this point in the year, with the September rosters expanded, really no point. Just one of those nights. Big hey, cut at that one. And Chasin is ahead one and two. And obviously after a month layoff and only one uh, rehab start uh, there was some question as to whether you wanted to push Jeremy much further than that first inning last night and with a fully loaded bullpen full of arms no sense taking any chances. Just missed there two balls and two strikes Jeremy said after the ball game he just never felt right out there never felt at home on the mound just sort of out of place after that layoff. Two and two to Matt Kemp. Bounce that one away, and it's a full count three and two. Justin Upton on deck. Yo, at least 
just seen. Well, pretty much what we've seen from him already. Quick, efficient, one, two, three, underway. We're all open up here at Chase. Down Phoenix, Arizona, Diamondbacks and the Padres in your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for San Diego is Tyson Ross. He's over 30 starts for the second straight season. No secrets with this guy by now. A big slider and a lot of sinkers. Both pitches giving Ross the third best ground ball rate in all of Major League Baseball. Here's Chris Owens. Just be patient, I think, is the biggest thing. He, uh, he's got two good pitches, and, uh, you know, it's pretty impressive that he can get away with two pitches, uh, you know, at this level. And um, that just shows you how good that his fastball and sinker can be with his slider mix. So um, I think we just got to be patient. And we did a good job last time against him of, you know, making him throw a lot of pitches. And uh, I think we get some guys on base and uh, make him uncomfortable out there. Well, Tyson Ross has pitched very well against the D-backs this year. A.J. Pollock in the leadoff spot. Ross 10-10, and 10, a 3-2-4. He's sixth in the National League in strikeouts, but he leads the league in walks. In fact, no pitcher in baseball has walked more batters this year than Tyson Ross. And he's behind on A.J. 2-0. and 0. And for a big tall guy Tyson Ross has a very short stride toward home plate that allows him to use that height stay on top of that sinker slider combination gets lots of downward movement. You saw the numbers on AJ Pollock seventh in the league at 312 he's got 16 homers. Doubled and scored a run last night he's hit safely in four straight. And a quick base runner for the Diamondbacks. Line up for Chip Hale tonight. Seeing A.J. Pollock at the top. He'll be out in center field once again. Andrew NCRT in right. Paul Goldschmidt down at first. David Cross in left field. Wellington Castillo doing the catching. Brandon Drury getting a start down at third base tonight with Chris Owens at second. Nick Ahmed at short. And Yulis Chassin on the mound for the defense. Here's Ender. 296 and four home runs. Was something to file away for future use. A 2 0 slider that time from Tyson Ross to fall behind 3 0 and ultimately ended up walking A.J. Pollock. But that's the kind of confidence he has in that breaking pitch. He'll throw it in any count. Solarte in on the grass at third base. Chip Hale recently switched places in the order with A.J. and Ender and Cigarte. Chip said A.J. Pollock was hitting so many hard grounders to second base, the double plays were starting to pile up. So he moved A.J. up, put Ender in the two hole. And that really serves two purposes for the Diamondbacks. One, it creates a better right, left, right, left in the one through four spots. Forces the other team to match up late in ball games. It also gives Ender here more chances to kind of shoot that ball into right field with A.J. Pollock at first base. Yeah, we know how accomplished uh, Ender is at slapping the ball to the opposite field past the third baseman that's usually drawn in to protect against a bunt and now you also give him a hole on the right side. Oh, 
And they're down 0 and 2. And they're 0 for 2 with a walk last night. He's had a very good homestand and pretty good numbers career against Tyson Ross. You know, I know as a catcher, I never liked having a number two hitter be a left handed batter if the leadoff guy is fast and gets on a lot because you don't get a good look at him as a catcher. You have to really rely on your bench. There goes Pollock. Here's the throw from Austin Hedges. Came off the bag. Dan Bellino, the second base umpire, delayed his call. You saw the motion. Indicating that AJ had come off the bag and then the tag was applied. Let's take a look. Jed Jerko down there. Oh, he's got his hand on there the whole time. The legs popped off, but it looked like the hand was on. There, yeah. It seemed to be a smooth transition. I don't know if there's enough to over. Well, we need enough to overturn this one. That's going to be a tough one. It's funny. It seems like Bob. We've seen so many of those swim moves with guys sliding into second base to avoid the tag, and Chip Hale will challenge the call. It seems like the umpires might be looking for that now because it it seemed from up here that Bellino may have anticipated that that happened. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, and I think one other byproduct of the replay review is going to be an emphasis on the fundamental of sliding into the base and staying on the base. I mean, we've seen as many guys called out on attempted steals because they were safe and then came off the bag as we have guys just thrown out at second base. It's another replay review brought to you by Mitch One. And as Bob very correctly pointed out, the most important point now is to have that clear and convincing evidence you need to get the call overturned. A disjointed slide. He hit it with his right foot, but then his left leg is on. His left leg goes across the top of the bag, and his left hand is on the base as his legs came off. So it looked to me like he was in contact with the base with some body part or the other the entire time. Dan Bellino was perfectly positioned. He was in an excellent spot to make the call. Look at Bellino's angle. You can't ask for better than that. He missed him right there with the initial tag, and by the time he gets the glove back on AJ, his left hand is on the base. Eerily similar to last night's start. And back to back plays challenged. Both went in the Diamondbacks' favor. Well, what you'd really like to see is right there, the right foot come down on the bag and use your left leg to kind of push yourself up out of the slide so you plant that right foot firmly on the base and stay on the base. It does look from that angle like by the time Jerko got the glove back on AJ's chest, the hand was already on the bag. And the funny thing is the guys that are actually involved in the play are usually the worst people to ask. You know, because they're not sure. AJ's running as fast as he can. He slid hard into the bag. Jerko's looking for something to tag there as AJ went past him. I don't think either one of the uh, participants there really had a good feel for whether he was safe or out. And Jerko, a converted second baseman, they're giving him a look at shortstop here this month. Headsets are coming off, and he is in there. Diamondbacks win the challenge. It's a stolen base for A.J. Pollock, his 35th of the year. The call has been overturned. And the Diamondbacks retain their challenge. Nicely done by Alan Campbell, the Diamondbacks video coordinator. An updated look at our replay review standings brought to you by Mix One. I'll make another prediction, partner. What do you got? They're going to start to give awards for... Guys like Alan Campbell. They should. They'll keep track of the stats. How many times were they right? How many times were they wrong? And we'll have awards at the end of the season. I mean, that's pressure. You got to look at as many angles as you can, as quickly as you can, knowing that the not only the entire dugout, but the entire ballpark is waiting for whatever you say. And as we've seen with Alan, uh, a lot of times, especially recently, there has to be compelling evidence to overturn that call. And I think Alan has a real good handle on. What's good enough for the umpire to change their call? 
The far fly out to right for Matt Kemp. AJ Blossom holds. One away. Here's Goldie. First baseman, number 44, Paul Goldschmidt. Goldie fifth in the league in hitting at 316. He's got 28 home runs and now 100 RBIs. Second in the National League, he's 10 RBIs behind the Rockies' Nolan Arenado. Boy, Arenado has just, he has been on an absolute tear. You look up and suddenly he's 10, 12 RBIs ahead of Goldie. Goldie, nine first inning home runs this season. Over the mound. Spangenberg, tough play. They get Goldie Pollock in at third. Left fielder, number six. Nice play by Corey Spangenberg going on the shortstop side of the bag out there in the middle of the field. Scoop and throw and plenty of time to get Goldie over there at first base. That's one of those plays. If you hit the rewind button, if Ender Inciarte was somehow able to move A.J. Pollock to third base, the Padres probably bring their infield in. That ball maybe bounces through into center field for a base hit. Well, A.J. hit it to the right, or Ender hit it to the right side. He just got it up in the air. So Pollock at third, two down for David Peralta. David ninth in the league in hitting. He's at 306. He's got 15 home runs. Quickly 0 and 2. We had a mistake there that time. Four seam fastball up and out over the plate, 92 miles per hour. Talk about it all the time. When you face good pitchers with good stuff, you have to take advantage of those mistakes. That one got away right there. Called strike three. Tyson Ross rings him up, gets his first strikeout, strands the leadoff walk. We are through one, no score here at Chase Field, the D-backs and the Padres. And celebrate the Hispanic Heritage Day.
It's presented by Budweiser. You can enjoy a pregame street festival presented by APS, then stick around after the game for a concert featuring Latin recording artist Luis Coronel, presented by Sprint and Samsung. For tickets, call 602-514-8400 or just go online at dbacks.com. Justin Upton leads off the San Diego second against Yolis Chassin. Upton 251 and 25 homers. 0 for 4, the walk and a strikeout last night. Boy, and this is a matchup that's gone the way of the D-backs right-hander. Justin Upton only <laughs> 1 for 16 with 10 punch-outs against Chassin. It's a little bit of ownage right there. Yeah, the scary thing is, though, as explosive a hitter as Justin Upton is, all it takes is one mistake, and he could hit the ball a long way. But so far, Justin has done a nice job against the Padres' left fielder. Behind three and zero, oh. still got the occasional Justin Upton jersey roaming around the ballpark, <laughs> watching himself on the monitor in the back of the uh, concession <laughs> stand there. And his fifth home run against the Diamondbacks this year. Justin Upton this season, 15 games versus the D-backs. Five homers, 10 RBIs. He doesn't hit many cheapies. Absolute blast to the second deck out there near Friday's front row sports grill. That's the thing about power hitters. Well, they might look bad in three or four or five at bats or 16 at bats, as the case is with Justin Upton against Chasin. But if you make that one mistake at the wrong time, they can hit it a long way. And Jerko gets that one way up in the air, but it's behind the Padre dugout, 458 feet and 110 miles an hour off the bat, according to StatCast. But as they always say, it's not the solo homers that beat you. Well, and we always used to say we had to score to win anyway. Might as well score two. They cut there by Jed Jerko, the shortstop. 243. He's got 14 home runs. His power production has picked up lately. Elise Chassin was the Rockies opening day starter only two years ago. Developed shoulder trouble last season with Colorado. Had to be shut down at the end of June. And then when his velocity was down this spring, the Rockies cut him loose. Hooked up with the Indians, made seven starts at AAA Columbus. Opted out of that minor league deal and signed with the Diamondbacks. Now here he is, shallow center. One down. He pitched very well at Reno and tonight makes his third big league start Second with Arizona. Number 15, Corey you may Stanford. notice on the back of Chassin's glove, uh, there's a, on the back of the fingers. Yeah, right there, you see that mark. I, I'm sure that would uh, throw up a red flag in the opposing dugout, but all that is is he laid his glove down somewhere wet. Hmm. You know, like the pool? Well, maybe the pool. I don't know <laughs> if he was out there before the game, but yeah, you lay it in the tunnel where there's uh, some moisture on the astroturf on the tunnel going back up to the clubhouse, or you lay it on the steps where a guy's just dumped a cup of water, and you, you get those water marks on the leather. But, uh, you know, once again, if you're in the other dugout, you go, hey, wait a minute. That's a foreign substance. No, it's just wet. That's our story, and we're sticking to That's it. That's right. Corey Spangenberg. Spangenberg had a pair of hits last night, including a double. Drove in three runs. He's hitting 266 with two homers.
mentioned Yolis Jacin auditioning, if you want to use that word, for a rotation spot with the Diamondbacks next year. He can hit the open market as a free agent this winter. He's only 27. He'll be 28 in January. But he lives in Scottsdale and hopes to be here next year. And with the way he has pitched so far, Diamondbacks would love to have him. This GM Dave Stewart. Shasin says he has come back from his shoulder troubles even stronger than he expected at this point. Just wants to feel good and show Dave Stewart and the Diamondbacks, everybody else for that matter, that he can be the guy he was two years ago when he won 14 games and threw 197 innings in Colorado. Base hit for Spangenberg. We'll see what transpires this offseason, but when you think about Chasin, he's a guy that uh, is a little more of a sure Catcher, thing. I mean, you talk about your young pitchers coming up through the minor league system, a lot of whom we've seen up here at the big leagues this year, and you know, we've seen the inconsistency. Good start followed by a not so good start, a couple of goods followed by a couple of bads, but uh, you'd like to think with his experience and his knowledge of the league, uh, especially the National League West, that this is a guy that maybe is a little bit more of a sure thing from start to start. The rookie catcher Austin Hedges. He's hitting just 164 with a pair of homers. He is a very highly regarded catch and throw guy, a top defensive prospect behind the plate. The offense has uh, fallen behind a bit. He is four for his last 41 at the plate. And Derek Norris, their starter, not in the lineup tonight. You might recall he took this hard foul ball right oh, off the right hand. Man, that still hurts. This was in the fifth inning last night. X-rays were negative. The Padres, for the moment, are saying it's a bone bruise, and he's supposed to see a specialist today. You can see it shaking and swelling. That was painful and doing a little work right now on the hand. One and zero on Hedges. There goes Spangenberg. The throw from Castillo is well ahead of the runner, and they get him. Wellington Castillo. That wasn't even close. I'm telling you, we pointed it out in the ball game last night. Strong throwing arm, absolutely. But watch how quickly he gets rid of it. That quick exchange into the throwing hand. Nice tag down there by Chris Owings. That ball beat him by a wide margin. And Spangenberg runs well. Sure does. Nine for 11 in his stolen base attempts. Caught for the third time this year. Two outs now. A 1 1 count on Hedges. Done that a few times tonight. Just spike that to the righty in a left hand batter's box. He's back. <laughs> Nicely done. That's his second strikeout. But Justin Upton hits one about 460 feet. And the Padres have a 1 0 lead.
tomorrow at 530. And then again after the Diamondback Live postgame show right here on Fox Sports Arizona. Some more prepared than others here tonight. <laughs> Gets that to the bottom of the second. Diamondbacks throw the Padres 1 0. Justin Upton is 26th home run of the year. I can't believe I never thought to put a pom pom on top of my catcher's gear. That would look like nice. a slacker. <laughs> Wellington Castillo leads it off against Tyson Ross. Elliott 247. He's got 19 homers. 17 of those home runs have come with the D backs. For two and a start last night before uh, Chip Hale emptied the bench about midway through and things got out of hand. Notice one thing about Tyson Chandler. He's very tall. Down in front. The Phoenix Sun is going to join us actually in the next uh, inning or so up in our booth. People in the upper deck are saying down in front. I hope we can we can fit him in here. <laughs> it's not a big booth. He's somewhat shorter. Just inside, one and two. Tyson Chandler, very excited to be the Phoenix Sun. Won a title with the Mavericks. He won an Olympic gold medal. He's been in the postseason a bunch. Really good signing for Phoenix. And we'll talk to him coming up shortly. Going to make Jeff Hornacek feel small during those timeouts. <laughs> <laughs> have to get him a box to stand on like uh, Kate had down on the sidelines earlier today. <laughs> so what you call improvising right there. Three two pitch. It drops into left center a base hit for Castillo. First hit for the Diamondbacks a lead off single in the second. Sitting on the radio to Tom Candiotti alongside the governor Greg Schulte. And here is the rookie Brandon Drury getting the start at third base tonight. Four for 15 to begin his big league career. And his first career double last night against the Padres. And we have seen Bob Brandon Drury barrel up the ball and he can hit some rockets in the gaps straight up the middle. Very excited about this batch is 23 years old last month. Well, one of the new metrics that uh, we keep track of and a lot of people pay close attention to that exit velocity. How fast does the ball come off the barrel of the bat? In a very limited sample size, Brandon Drury is showing that uh, he can generate some exit velocity. <laughs> that line drive he hit off the wall and left last night about knocked the fence down. He is a big kid at 6'2, 190. He is sturdy to say the least. Two and one. 110 off the bat of Upton for the Padre Homer. Brandon Drury, this is what we've seen so far, Bob, and you have to like what you've seen. Woo. Well, opposing pitchers haven't liked it so much because most of his base hits have gone right back at him. John Lester in Chicago, this was a line drive off the wall last night. Ricocheted all the way back almost to the infield. Boy, in a very simple approach. Square stance, stands very upright, not a lot of wasted movement. I mean, that's just a classic right-handed batter stance. Very slow spinning roller. Spangenberg has one play, and Castillo's in at second. Second baseman, number 16. Well, he got it to the right side. Brings up Chris Owens. ZO 239, he's got four homers. I 
Diamondbacks had a runner in scoring position in the first and couldn't get the run home. Chance to tie up the ball game right here with Castillo at second and one out. Tied him up inside that time, on one. For the Diamondbacks. They faced him three times. He's 2 0 with a 2 1 4 ERA. And he put on a show here at Chase Field back on June 20th. A complete game, four hitter. He walked only one and struck out nine. And that was an electric performance. He threw 60 sliders in that game. 60. That's amazing. <laughs> Jeez. And the thing was, he followed that up. About a week later, he beat the D-backs at Petco Park. Gave up just two hits in six innings. But he walked five in that ball game. Padres still won at 4-2. And the bat just shatters on Owens. Will Myers at first. Two down. That'll bring up Nick Ahmed. Nick Ahmed. Ahmed, 225. He's got nine home runs. Having a very good month of September at the plate. Nick Hale has talked to his hitters before this year about getting them to lay off that ball down low from Tyson Ross. He's been up a lot in the zone so far tonight. As if you look, you know you're going to get that slider. You know it's going to, for the most part, break out of the strike zone. And Chip has said before, the more times these young Diamondback hitters see Tyson Ross, the more they'll get used to him and adjust their approach and lay off that slider. Throws it a ton. He's throwing that slider more than ever. Well over 40% of the time this year. He's noticed, he says, that hitters are a little more patient with him now. Sliders become such a dominant pitch for him that opposing teams are much more aware of it. Especially after you've seen it a couple of times. Missed away there and it's two and one. And he's noticed that hitters are laying off that slider more often. So he's finding himself behind in counts a little more this year like he is now. Nick ahead two balls and a strike. Can't hold up that time. Thing to say, hey, lay off that pitch. It's another thing to actually do it. Well, you can have a great game plan going into the at bat against Tyson Ross, but once you get in that batter's box and see the movement on the pitches, when he elevates the four seam fastball, then goes right back downstairs with the two seamer and the slider. Yes, he went. Tom Hallian down at first. So Ross strands the leadoff single and keeps it one nothing. Here's what's next brought to you by CenturyLink. We go from Tyson Ross to Tyson Chandler. The newest son is in our booth when we come back.
by the newest Phoenix Sun and friend, it's Tyson Chandler. Uh, who you got with you here? Uh, this is my son. It's Tyson Chandler the second. How you doing? Say hello. It's great to have you guys here. Welcome to the Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Uh, why the Phoenix Suns? Why is that a good fit for you right now? Uh, well, going into free agency, I had, uh, you know, I had a checklist, and you know, I wanted to be in a great city with great weather. Um, you know, I wanted to play with a young group that I felt like I can grow with, and uh, and also I wanted to play in a, uh, you know, fast-paced uh, system. Well, I mean, they went to the three guards last year. That didn't work out. So you're not a guard. You're a little taller than that. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> but uh, the resume is, I mean, you, you, I'm trying to find something you haven't done. You're in the postseason all the time. You won a title with Dallas. You won a gold medal in the Olympics. It's been quite a career for you. Yeah, it's, you know, it's uh, hard work pays off, you know, and you know, I stayed persistent. You know, the beginning of my career had some ups and downs, but I stuck with it and, uh, you know, been blessed and fortunate to, you know, had some great things happen along the way. I think that's important in any sport. We've talked about the Diamondbacks. A lot of young players up at this time yeah. of the season, you know, and you're going to have your ups and downs as a young player, but somewhere along the line, you'd like to think that light bulb goes off and you kind of figure things out a little bit. Absolutely. You know, young players, it's learning. You know, it's learning on the job, and it's not it's not always easy. Uh, you're going to take your lumps, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you stick with it, you keep your head down and work hard and continue to remember what got you there, you know, it all works out. Well, as soon as we have Tyson Chandler in our booth, Tyson Ross gets a base hit. Uh, so now Travis Jankowski comes up. Uh, everything I've read uh, about Tyson, your arrival here, Jeff Hornacek keeps using the word leader. Uh, is that important to you, and how important was it for the Suns? Did they communicate that to you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I know that, uh, you know, the Suns have a, have a very young cast, and you know, but they have a, a ton of talent, you know, and that was the same way when we faced them last year, you know, when I was with the Mavs, and I think they, they beat us a couple times uh you know, it's just when you have a young group, um, you know, they have to learn how to finish games. And uh, I think that's going to be the biggest thing for us this year is, you know, really understanding how to finish games. And, and also, you know, winning the games you're supposed to win. You win the games you're supposed to win, and then, you know, you, you try to sneak some in against the tougher guy. Now play for Jacin Jankowski. Good speed beats out the bunt attempt. And the Padres have two on nobody out here. Tyson talking about being a leader who were some guys that you played with maybe early in your career that kind of helped you along and showed you what it means to be a leader. Oh one of the big guys and um, you know that helped me uh, coming up was you know Scotty Pippen. Um, you know, I had uh, Antonio Davis. I had Charles Oakley. Uh, so you know I was real fortunate to be around you know, a lot of veterans you know with a lot of knowledge. Um, you know and it helps but just just being able to watch them especially you know I remember you know Oakley on the treadmill, you know, before practice, and we used to laugh and joke about how long it would take him to get warmed up. Um, but it, it wasn't even about that. It was just about him going through his routine. Um, you know, and that was one of the things that stuck out in my mind as I started to get older. You really do learn. It, it, it's true. Every athlete I've talked to in every sport, you really do learn that as you get older, that routine means everything, doesn't it? You Absolutely. have to be able to maintain. Absolutely. Um, you know, every summer I'll always stay focused, um, you know, on my routine. And, and always, you know, pick out things that I wanted to get better at and things I wanted to accomplish that season. Uh, and, and that's how you get better, you know, um, is by sticking to your routine, and, uh, especially when you get older because all of a sudden your mind now is ahead. You know, the game slows down. You're able, able to understand things, um, you know, and if you mentally, I'm sorry, physically continue to grow, uh, that's when you're special when they both connect at the same time. Do you, will it be hard to, not that you're going to come in and yell at guys, but it, it, will it be hard to be a leader as the new guy? Um, you know, I, at the end of the day, I just want to win. Yeah, so everybody does, right? Yeah. So you know, it's I just you know I get out there and try to hold guys you know accountable the same way I would myself. Um, and you know, all of that stuff to me goes out the window the moment that you're on the court because then it's basketball. Um, and you know, and if I try to tiptoe in or this and that, trust me, when I get on the court, I won't because I want to win. And you know, everything else goes out the window. Well, this city has always had a great reputation as a really, really good basketball town. Is that yeah. still the case for, from your perspective, or other NBA free agents who might want to come here? What is how is Phoenix perceived out there? Yeah, you know, um, I think they went through their growing period. Uh, you know, after uh, you know Nash, Marion, and, and Stoudemire, and you know, and that cast that came through. Um, you know, and then you know every team goes through it where it's kind of that you know rebuilding stage. Um, you know, where you got to try to find some good young talent that you feel like you can grow with and then surround them. 
Uh, I think they surprised some people a couple years ago, um, you know, with the season they had, with having such a young cast, but still able to get out there and win some games. Um, you know, I think they, uh, you know, they have to grow from last year, you know, because you had the success before. So now teams are going to, you know, be ready for you and prepared. Uh, so it's just about continuing to take steps. But, yeah, I definitely think it's a city that, especially now, is back on uh, the agent's radar. Let me ask you this. Seriously, how screwed up are the Knicks? <laughs> I mean, what's the deal? What's going on over there? Those guys are a, a dumpster fire. Your guess is good as mine. I don't have a clue what's going on there, but, you know, uh, I'm not there some, no more, so it's good. not my problem. You made it out. <laughs> Three and two on Will Myers. Just seen it a little bit of a mess here. Two on, nobody out. And he walked him. Padres have the bases loaded. Do you get out to any baseball game? You a baseball fan at all? Yeah, you know, I respect every sport, um, you know, and I, and I respect the work that, uh, that you know, guys put in uh, to get to this level. So, yeah, definitely, uh, I'm into uh, to baseball. I, you know, I'm from L.A., so, you know, I was able to get out to a lot of the uh, Dodger games, uh, you know, coming up and, and, you know, the surrounding areas, San Francisco a little bit, just, you know, more closer to L.A. And then whatever city I play in, if, if it has a team, I definitely love to come out and support. We saw you opening up against one of your former teams, the Mavs. How about that? Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a special night. <laughs> now, what's it like to play for Mark Cuban? We hear that, I mean, the stories are the players are treated like kings. Is it, is it really that good? I don't know if the players are treated like kings. Uh, you know, I think that's more of when, you know, at the beginning, uh, you know, when he first came in and, you know, wanted to do everything big and really attract free agents and things like that. And I think it worked because, you know, he came in and made a splash. Sure did. Um, but it wasn't, you know, I think also people see him and how passionate he is on the sideline and, and think it would be tough for, you know, be around him in the locker room and things like that. But I will say he has a great balance because he doesn't um, he doesn't get in the way, uh, you know, and he's the owner. So he could get in the way, <laughs> you know, as much as he wanted to. But he, he doesn't. He, I think he respects the balance of the game. John Harvey Salarte, bases full, nobody out. Bounced over the mound. Amen. They get one and they get two. Tyson Ross scores, and the Padres take a 2 0 lead. Nicely done by the Diamondback shortstop. Who are the best athletes? And then, what, which sport has the best athletes? Because this uh, is a pretty athletic play, right? It's a very athletic play. That was a great throw he made. Um, I, mean, I, I, I know I, you're going to be biased. That's yeah. okay. You know, but honestly, I would have to say basketball. Uh, you know, because, you know, different sports do different things. Uh, but basketball is one of the one sport or one of the few sports where you actually have to you have to uh, be in great condition. Uh, you have to be able to move laterally. Uh, you got to be able to jump. You also got to have be able to have ball handling uh, skills, hand eye coordination. Um, so you kind of got to cover all ground, whereas, you know, a lot of other sports is just, uh, you know, a few things that you have to get great at in basketball. You know, we have to train really well around it. I want to ask you about the new building you're going to play in next door. How have you played there in the past? You know, some ball players go to yeah. Wrigley Field or go to Fenway. Man, I don't hit good here. But yeah. how is it as a basketball player? You know what? I think all the time, I, I, you know, with warm climate and uh, warm weather places, uh, basketball players tend to love it, you know, because your, your bones feel good, your joints feel good, and, <laughs> and you just feel good about yourself coming to the arena. So, you know, you're able to kind of put up big performances there. So. You know, I hope that carries over this year. It's going to be warm here, Tyson. I'll yeah, tell you I, that. Oh, I got I got real uh, acquainted with the heat real <laughs> fast as <laughs> soon as I stepped out there off the airplane. Well, speaking of athletic ability, let's take a look. Now, this is you here. First pitch duties. How did this go? Uh oh. Well, you know what? I had a whole plan here. Well, I said I was going to. Oh, that came out a little high and then, and then ended low real early. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I had this whole plan uh, that I was going to talk to the, uh, you know, the catcher and and, um, and and shake my head a couple times and wait for the, the right call. Go through the whole sequence. Sure. I was talking to my son, and all of a sudden they said, okay, you're up next. And I think it kind of threw me off, and I rushed, rushed up there and rushed it. And, and you know, hopefully I'm out here again to throw another pitch so I can try to do that anymore. Tyson Chandler, hey, thanks for stopping by. It was great to visit, and we're thrilled to have you here. Thank Welcome you to the Sons in the Valley. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Good Thank you. Great to meet you. My pleasure.
end up spending more time with their teammates than they, than they do their own families. And David Peralta and Ender and Ciarte have kind of become a dynamic duo, whether on the road or here at Chase Field. And so since we call Peralta the freight train, I did a little survey of the clubhouse to ask who Ender is. Some of the answers I got were uh, Thomas the Train from the children's animated show. I also heard from him that he believes he's Speedy Gonzalez, but the winner was the Roadrunner. So if you hear a little beep, beep, I think it's the hair guys. They said that that reminds him of the Roadrunner. It works for me. Well, you got to have a caboose on a freight train. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways to go. <laughs> they call him the caboose. <laughs> you know, at least you seen. I know, a little bit of That'll look good on the Hall of Fame plaque, the caboose. The caboose. <laughs> the last thing you see before you get beat. That works. That certainly describes Ender flying around the bases. Go back to Kate. Well, guys, it sounds like you're on the same page as Peralta. He told me that he likes to call Ender the caboose or the, the little choo-choo. A little engine that could. That's I think sure. I can. I think I can. That's one side I don't like to see. It's going to be a while. Oh, man. AJ Pollock. Drive down here to the ballpark and you're thinking to yourself, man, there's no traffic today. I'm making great time. And you get within throwing distance of the ballpark and get hung up behind a train. Yeah, and as you saw, it. it Moves a lot slower than David Peralta. That's for sure. One and one. AJ walked and stole the bases first time. D backs just one hit the first time through the order against Tyson Ross. A Castillo single. Salarte in third. Great to meet Tyson Shannon. What a good, cool guy. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah. Like great signing for the Suns. Get some uh, size in there. Boy, he's big. He had to duck his head just to get into our booth. I mean, I can't really, you know, no idea what it would be like to be that tall, but everywhere he goes, you know, he's ducking under the doorways, and we've got lights hanging down here in the booth, and uh, very hazardous conditions for Tyson, but he got in and out and uh, left in the same way he came in. Finally got somebody in here who's uh, taller than Randy. Yeah. It's hard to do. So here's Ender and Ciarte flying out to right his first time. Ender's had a good home stand, hitting 360 over these last seven games. Taking all the way, one and one. Just daring Matt Kent to try and throw him out. Enders the board with a two out single. First baseman, Paul Goldschmidt. A broken bat base hit for a Diamondback hitter. Wellington Castillo, you may remember, led off that second inning with a broken bat floater over the head of Jed Jerko at short. This time, Ender dunks it into shallow right field for a base hit. What about Tyson Ross? He's given up two hits, both singles, and both on broken bats. Mm -hmm. Here's Goldie. Grounded out his first time up. On the bag at second base, all kinds of room on that right hand side for Goldie. Effort. I like it. Although I'd suggest decaf. Oh, 
That one behind Hedges, and Ender moves up, thinking about third here. A wild pitch charged to Tyson Ross. Watch Hedges try to get the glove fingers down over in front of that ball. We talked about it earlier this season uh, about catchers blocking balls behind the plate, and sometimes when the pitch is that wide to your right side, you're better off just trying to backhand it and get your body behind your glove in a backhand position. Kind of got caught in between that time, tried to flip the glove around and couldn't get in front. We we'll won't see that a lot from Austin Hedges. He is an outstanding defensive catching prospect. Fans when the D backs win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. Derek Norris with that bone bruise on the hand, starting catcher. 3 0 to Goldie. In there for a strike. Three mile an hour power singer. <laughs> Up. It's coming in on the hands like that. He started throwing a cutter as well, so he's got pitches that move in different directions. And this with that one. Second walk of the ball game issued by Tyson Ross. Diamondbacks have two on and two out for David Peralta. Let's get that freight train cranked up here. Mm -hmm. Peralta struck out looking in his first at bat against Tyson Ross to win the first inning. And a single and a walk last night. The base hit for David extended his hitting streak. He's now hit safely in 11 straight games. Talking about David Peralta not too long ago, said, Look, he's got light tower power. We talk about batting practice. He can hit him out of here with the best of them. But now he's really starting to figure out when to shorten his swing, use the other side of the field, and has become a much more complete hitter. A lot of that has come from working with Turner Ward and Mark Grace. He kicks away from Hedges. The runners move up. There's one thing, Bob, and it's been great to watch Ender go around the bases here just in this half inning. Every time he takes the turn, he takes the full turn at close to full speed. He's always ready in case there's a little glimmer of an opening for an extra, extra base. Or you might catch a catcher that decides I'm going to throw behind him down there at third base from the on-deck circle. And if you try to do that, Ender's liable to just keep on coming down that third baseline try to score. You saw it on the base hit when he rounded first base like that. On the previous wild pitch coming around second, now here at third. One and two. Tyson Ross now with 14 wild pitches on the season. I figure a guy that relies so heavily on that nasty slider, a lot of them are going to end up in the dirt. And Austin Hedges, even with his reputation of being a solid defensive catcher, he's having some issues trying to corral him back there. No pitcher in baseball has issued more walks this year than Tyson Ross. Two so far tonight. Second and third, two outs, one and two on Peralta. Should have looked before I said it. Tyson Ross with a wide margin in the National League with the most wild pitches with his 14. One and two. Oh, he's got it. That big hammer slider, that two seamer, and in this case, it dropped. 
hard away from David. The cutter that will come in on David. I mean, it, it's a whole kitchen sink deal with this guy up there. Doesn't really throw the change up. He's pretty much put that away. And Ciarante at third, Goldie at second. And he gets Peralta for the second time tonight and strands two. Four strikeouts for Tyson Ross. He's got a two nothing lead. can fill it up with the new Diet Pepsi. Same crisp and refreshing flavor you love. Now aspartame free. Pick up some today at your local retailer. Or some right here at the ballpark. 2015 Collector's Edition Souvenir Cups. This month selling the Gonzo 20 Cup. Got one right here full of Diet Pepsi. It sells itself. <laughs> We're moving a lot of cups. Justin Upton. He homered his first time up. 458 feet, his 26th of the year. Five homers and 10 RBIs in 15 games against the Diamondbacks this season. One and two. Going to miss, miss in your favor. That breaking ball over the middle of the plate to Justin Upton, a guy that's already hit a home run about a half a mile to left field. So, try to lead him off that corner, maybe get him to chase. Nice job by Wellington to keep it in front. 2 2 pitch. This was Justin Upton to lead off the second against Yolis Chassin. Oh, look away. Man. Justin Upton uh, has that. Short abbreviated finish at times too. We talked about it with uh, Jake Lamb when he's swinging the bat well. Chase Utley, Evan Gaddis. There's some other guys in the game, and Justin Upton on occasion will really cut that follow through off short. Sky high pop up. Nick Ahmed underneath. Ooh. Carried on him a little bit. 
Yeah, before Jed Jerko makes his way to the plate, let's take a look at our Valley Honda keys to the ball game tonight. Real easy. Anybody that's been to a casino knows 777 means jackpot. Well, Yolis Chassin in his first two starts has pitched into the seventh inning, and for a pitching staff that is desperately in need of some innings out of a starter, seven more innings tonight wouldn't hurt anything. Jed Jerko. So call north side 777. There you go. We got you three sevens. Jackpot. Good work by the folks in the truck. Jerko flying out to center his first time up. Huh? This guy was slumping so badly. A very slow start to the year. Padres had to send him to the minor leagues in June just to clear his head. And after all the work he put in trying to fix his swing down there about three weeks and. He was brought back up to the big leagues on July 1st, and since he's been up, he's been a different guy. He's clearly better. Since July 1st, Jerko hitting about 260. He's got 12 homers. Reaches it down and rolls that one the other way to Goldie. Two down. It's four in a row set down by Chasin. Second baseman, Corey Spengenberg. That's a great hat. <laughs> now. Well, you're pretty good on the technology. I, I was going to, you know, make fun of, make a flip phone joke, but you've got all kinds of things going on over there. Yeah, it's, it's the usual <laughs> iPad and the mission control. Well, Bronson Arroyo hung on to his flip phone. He said, if it's not broke, I get a new one. It works just fine. He's right. It takes a long time to text, but other than that, Corey Spangenberg, you're a big texter. Yeah, yeah, with certain people, yeah, you know, stay in touch that way. I know you like the FaceTime with Gemma. Oh, yeah. Twice can't, today. Can't do that on a flip phone. No. There's the old uh, phone you used to use here. Ring down to the dog. You just pick it up and it rings. You don't have to dial a number. You don't have to talk to whoever the operator used to be on those commercials, you know. And all the wires, remember plugging them yeah, in. They'd always uh, try to remember the one on uh, on the Andy Griffith show. Yeah, what was her name? Lily Tomlin used to do a one ringy dingy. One ringy dingy. Yeah, nothing like that. We're high tech here. And yeah, now it's uh, like the bat phone. Yes, Commissioner. Line to center. And AJ runs it down. A one, two, three, four. For Chasin who's settling in. Out and backs trail the Padres two nothing. Season Saturday, October 3rd, D backs and the Astros. First 10,000 fans with us will receive this Los D backs soccer jersey. It's courtesy of Pepsi. Just call 602 514 8400. Get your tickets or visit dbacks.com. Those uh, could be the critical games for uh, the Houston Astros. 
and they are right now in an absolute dogfight with the Texas Rangers who have moved within a half game of their division lead. There are the most D-back soccer jerseys being modeled. But uh, right now the Astros who lost at Texas last night tied up 5 5 in the seventh with the Rangers and they're coming in here to finish up their year. And that AL West Jeff Bannister done a tremendous job to bring the Rangers back from the dead to get within a half game of the division lead. So those could be critical games here to win the season. Good. That's what you hope for. I mean obviously you hope the games mean something to you in that final week of the season but uh, lacking that you want to ruin somebody else's party. Solarte in third long throw. Nice play on Harry Solarte. It's not a really nice year for the Padres. Third baseman. Brandon. The smoothest third baseman in the game but he's got a big arm and he likes to show it really winds up and gets on top of this one. Plenty of time to get beef over there at first base, ranging way into foul territory. Boom. Here now, that's another story. <laughs> he was hearing it from the Diamondback dugout <laughs> as Brandon Dury steps in. That was last night. David Peralta was kind of giving him the business. David's got a whole thing going on top. Solarte has his in back. One and one on jury you grounded out his first time up. I got a, a question on the Twitter BB for you from uh, Kevin Bliss who asked after watching the last inning end why does an outfielder who catches the third out on a fly ball then toss it to another outfielder as they come back in. It's just a goofy thing that uh, some teams do uh, you know, whoever catches the ball one or both of the other outfielders will kind of break toward the dugout and like a quarterback hitting a wide receiver they tend to pass it to him and then they pass it to the other guy and then eventually as they get back to the dugout they usually end up giving it to a fan uh, right behind the dugout. Baseball fans pick up on everything. Oh yeah, it's amazing. It's something to make it a little more interesting. You know you don't want to just catch it and run off the field. There's no drama in that. Gets the call from Alfonso Marquez and Brandon Drury goes down looking. Good strike out for Tyson Ross. And that is what we're talking about. They catch the ball and that's the end of the inning. And you think, okay, why doesn't he just keep the ball and run into the dugout? But no. Gonna throw it around. <laughs> yeah. And then David may throw it to Ender and Ender throw it back to AJ on their way back into the dugout. And like I said, eventually it usually ends up in the stands in the hands of a young kid. That's where it belongs at the end of the inning. Chris Owings looks at strike one. CO popped up his first time. He back still with only two hits against Tyson Ross, both singles. Castillo in the second and Incigarte in the third. Hey fans, now's the time. Speaking of the, the Twitter, the hashtag of the whole thing, AZ Data Strong Fan. For your fan photo, you might see yourself at an upcoming Diamondbacks broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. As uh, Gemma started tweeting it, she's doing FaceTime. I mean, she's pretty far along here. I've gotten a couple of text messages when she's gotten a hold of uh, my daughter Lacey's phone. L Z Z Z M M M M M X. I guess it's better than calling China. <laughs> no, but that's the amazing thing about you know the new generation, and every generation is a little more advanced than the one before it. You know. I used to be terrified of computers. Well, what if I break it? I don't want to hit the wrong button here or put the cursor in the wrong place. And these kids today, they pick up an iPhone or an iPad and start flipping through there and changing pages. That's amazing. They have no fear whatsoever of technology. We'll be showing you how to work your uh, iPhone 16. Yeah. In a few years. Of course, just wait till the robots take over. Then we'll see. Said the king of the robot umps. Called strike three. Back to back strikeouts, both looking for Tyson Ross. A word with Alfonso Marquez. Ross has six punch outs and a two nothing lead.
special guest, Elizabeth Reich of Make-A-Wish Arizona. And really, Elizabeth, you and your coworkers should be celebrating every night, given all that you do for deserving children, granting them dreams and wishes to come true. But take me through what you guys are celebrating tonight at the ballpark. Sure. Thanks, Kate. Well, our fiscal year ended August 31st, and we granted the most wishes ever in the 35 years history of Make-A-Wish Arizona, 355 wishes for Arizona kids with life-threatening medical conditions. So the whole staff is here to celebrate with our favorite Diamondbacks. Congratulations. That's absolutely incredible. And I know your organization means a lot to the Diamondbacks, from Derek Hall to the players. They want to team up with you guys to help those kids out there. What does it mean to you to have the team backing you up? Oh, we are so lucky for the Diamondbacks. Everybody in Arizona is so lucky to have such a great team that's dedicated to our community. And at the Diamondbacks, we're especially lucky. Derek Hall just finished as our board chair and now has become a member of the Make-A-Wish America Board of Directors. So he will be involved with Make-A-Wish nationally. And J.J. Putz is now on our board. And so we have lots of backing from our Diamondbacks. And any time a child has a wish that involves baseball or involves the Diamondbacks, they can't do enough for, the, for that child. And anyone who hears the story of children involved with Make-A-Wish and how you help those wishes come true, I think it touches them and they want to be a part of it. How can everyday people be a part of Make-A-Wish? Oh, there are two great ways. You can give us money because the only way we grant wishes is through money. You can also give us airline miles. We do a lot of uh, travel wishes. 77% of our wishes involve travel. So if people have miles that are about to expire, they can give those to us. But you can also volunteer. The actual wish granting is done by volunteers, and we have 630 volunteers throughout the state of Arizona who help us do our jobs. So if you go to Arizona.wish.org, you can find out all the ways you can help us. Well, thank you so much. Thank Enjoy you. tonight. Congratulations on Thanks. the year and everything you guys have done. And guys, I think in our profession, we're pretty lucky because we've been around a lot of kids who've been granted those wishes and we just know how important they are. Really can change the child's life, but I think change ours too when we watch those come true. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, we are so lucky to have Make-A-Wish Arizona doing great work and with us here tonight in the ballpark as they celebrate granting a record number of wishes for Arizona children with life-threatening medical conditions. They have granted 355 wishes this year, and they just do amazing, amazing things. They really do, and the players uh, really respond. I mean, you know, there's a lot of visitors at the ballpark on a daily basis, and uh, when the Make-A-Wish kids come out here, everybody makes time in their day to go over and say a word, sign an autograph, pose for a picture. The guys have absolutely been great, and not only the D-backs, the visiting team gets involved as well. Everybody wants to be part of that make a wish. Jolie Chassin goes three and two on Tyson Ross who singled and scored his first time up and walks him second walk issued by Chassin. Yeah, Diamondbacks have been part of several wishes the last few years. There was a, a young man recently who wished to be the Diamondbacks manager for a day. I know you were involved yeah, with that yeah. too. I had a chance to talk to that young man down in the dugout. He was a big time baseball fan. I visited uh, Derek Hall's office. The president and CEO signed a contract. Got to pick the lineup with Chip Hale there. Got to meet the team. Tony the Russi even had him trying on World Series rings just to get a feel. Should have let him argue with an umpire just to get the full feeling of what it's like to be a manager. <laughs> you don't want to deprive him of the best parts, oh, right? And I guarantee you the umpires would have got involved. You know, oh, just because it's make a wish, you know, you want to do stuff for those kids. The umpires union is terrific yeah. about getting the umpires involved because the umpires don't ever have a home game. Mm -mm. So it's one thing. It's great to do something for your community as an organization. The umpires and the union, they're all over the country. And so they really have to coordinate their efforts and they do an outstanding job. The scene walks the pitcher Tyson Ross. Now he's behind on Jankowski 2 0. It's been a little bit of an uneven start tonight for Yoli's Chasin. He is getting the start tonight. The Diamondbacks essentially skipping Chase Anderson's turn through the rotation. There's Chase. Skipping a little more than one start is how Chip Hale put it with Chase. And they are looking at next week on the road for a start for him. But he is in the bullpen right now. And they feel that Chase maybe needed a little bit of a break. 
He's carved a long run for Peralta. Here comes the train. He runs it down. Ross back to the bag. And Chase Anderson, for his part, he's been working on some fundamental stuff with Mike Carkey, getting the ball down. And Randall Delgado starts to warm up in the Sanderson for the bullpen. But we might see Chase in relief here. Because as Chip said, if you're going to work on all that stuff, it, you know, it's fine, but you're not going to see it unless you pitch in a game. And they don't want him to start just yet, so they will try and get him some games out of the bullpen. Here's Will Myers. Yeah, Jankowski flied out to left field, that little floater in front of David Peralta. I thought it was interesting. If you listen to the audio, listen. Everybody on the field started yelling in and in the guys in the dugout the infielder sometimes the outfield sees the swing but they don't hear the contact they don't realize the ball wasn't hit very hard so in order to try to help everybody started screaming in 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 you love to see that here on September 15th that's just part of the DNA at this point after the work that Chip Hale and his coaching staff have put in Myers has struck out and walked 0 for 1 Myers had a homer and a double last night, four RBIs. No appeal, two and one. Will Myers, a breakthrough season two years ago in Tampa Bay. He was the American League Rookie of the Year. But he's been plagued by serious injuries to both wrists the last two years. Just now starting to get that timing and swing back, says Pat Murphy. The scene misses. It's three and one. Yeah, we made the comparison to Dale Murphy, a guy that played back in my day because of their physical status and kind of the end of their swing. Both get great extension, that back arm bent, head right down the barrel of the bat. The only difference is Murphy has a little more bend in his back leg. Will Myers hits off more of a straight back leg. But very similar in their approach and their build. Myers 6'3, 205. Kind of a big, lanky guy, but pretty solid. And has tremendous power. Just like Dale Murphy. There's the strike, and it's full three and two. Sinker right on that inside corner at the knees. Myers tried to sway the home plate umpire by starting down the first baseline, but uh, right there on the corner. Here goes Tyson Ross from first. Late time granted by Alfonso Marquez. It's been 10 games since Will Myers came back from. Wrist surgery earlier this month. And since he's been back, he's hitting about 240 with two homers. No batting gloves. Called strike three. Hold on there, Will. That's the end of the inning. At least Jacine works around the one out walk. He gets his third strikeout. Marquez rings him up. Bottom five on the way. Still 2 nothing, San Diego.
by your Valley Honda dealer, where you'll get more standard features for less money. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Mix One, great taste, no face, available at local retailers. Back at Chase Field, Diamondbacks last night against James Shields scored only one run through the first eight innings of that ball game. Slow to get the offense going here tonight against Tyson Ross, just two hits. And they trail it 2-0 as we start the bottom of the fifth. You know, Will Myers tried to go down and take first base on the 3-1 pitch, tried to influence Alfonso Marquez as the ball was out of the strike zone. Then the 3-2 pitch is out of the strike zone. And gets rung up. So Wellington Castillo kind of trying to snap it back mm -hmm. inside that zone. Going to hold that pitch close to the corner, and they did get the call. Well, Ross has retired the last four he's faced three by strikeout he struck out Ahmed back to win the second in Nick's first at bat tonight. Ross so far has given up only two hits he's walked two, struck out six. Pitcher spot is. Due up next, Phil Goslin in the on-deck circle and rookie Zach Godley warming up in the Sanderson Ford bullpen. Chip Hale told us they would likely use Zach Godley from time to time in a relief role to finish out the season. To trying to get some offense going against Tyson Ross. They need every hitter they can get at this point, so Chasin might be done after five innings. One and two on Ahmed. Nick's had a really good month of September. He's hitting just about 380 this month with eight extra base hits, including two home runs. He waves at that one. Seven strikeouts for Tyson Ross. The numbers on Yolis Chassin. Two earned on four hits and five. He walked two and struck out three. Gave up the Justin Upton 468 foot homer, 458 on the homer to lead off the second. And Ross led off the third for the single and scored to add the second Padre run. And he is, uh, Bob, not getting his share of run support. No, not at all. I mean, this is a ball game. Uh, he hasn't been on top of his stuff tonight, but certainly he's pitched effectively enough to give his team a chance to win. But trailing by two runs, you got to get some offense going somehow. So, uh, Chassin will be taken down for the pinch hitter here. It's Phil Goslin, 282 and two homers. Phil was one for four with an RBI last night. Got the start at second base, and they're hitting for Chassin. Not getting good swings against this guy so far. Down one and two. Tyson Ross allowed a single and a walk in the third, and he has settled in ever since. He's retired the last five he's faced. Four by strikeout. Two and two. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score five runs or more, Taco Bells giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. The take by Goslin. It's a full count, three balls and two strikes. A.J. Pollock on deck. Got him. Four consecutive strikeouts for Tyson Ross. That's his eighth punch out of the night. Center fielder, A.J. Pollock. Tyson Ross has the kind of stuff that uh, he's probably going to throw a no hitter someday. I mean, when he's really feeling that slider and putting it on both sides of the plate, leading hitters out of the zone, throwing it for a strike when he wants to, mixing in the sinker, mixing in the four seamer. If he's got it all going on a given night like he has done here in the last couple of innings, it could be tough to get the bat on. Six in a row retired, five by strikeout, all since that two out walk to Goldie in the third. And he's ahead of AJ 0 and 1. 0 and 2. 
Andrew Kashner uh, pitching tomorrow's ball game for the Padres. Another guy with no hitters type of stuff when he's on top of his game. He's up against Robbie Ray in the series finale tomorrow night. One and two. AJ has walked and grounded out 0 for 1. The problem always seems to be against this guy is picking up that slider. And Chip Hale talked about this. When Tyson Ross's slider is on, it's hard to recognize. Jake Lamb had all kinds of trouble with Tyson Ross earlier this year. So that's one reason why Jake is not in the starting lineup tonight. Brandon Drury's at third. This looks like none of the Diamondback hitters ever really see the ball very well against Tyson Ross. Just upstairs that time, two and two. Even the sliders that aren't strikes, they look like a fastball, and then suddenly it's out of the zone, but it's too late. Full count three and two. Well, they went three and two on Goslin, got the strikeout. Now three and two on Pollock with Enciarte on deck. Over the mound, Spangenberg. Well, Tyson Ross has settled in the rocking chair. He's retired seven straight. He's got a two nothing lead. Quality on MLB.TV Premium. Watch every out-of-market game live on more than 400 supported devices. You'll get real-time highlights, live look-ins, a pitch tracking widget, and a whole lot more in spectacular HD. Just visit MLB.TV today. Sixth inning at Chase Field. D-backs, Jerome Padres, 2-0. Jerome dogs for everybody. <laughs> yeah, one would feed that whole group. You're right, a whole section. New pitcher for the Diamondbacks on in relief of Yolise Jacin. It's rookie right-hander Zach Godley who's been terrific in a starting role this year. And has more than doubled his innings thrown versus last year when he was a reliever in the Cubs minor league system. So they have pretty much hit the wall with Zach in terms of his workload this year. But a couple of a bullpen appearances here and there to finish out the year. That's the plan anyway. And Herbie Solarte will lead off the San Diego six. He's 0 for 2. Zach Godley, I think it's fair to say, has been something of a revelation this year. Just an absolute bulldog out there. Sprints on and off the mound. Acquired in the offseason from Chicago with a Miguel Montero deal. And 
certainly figures to contend for a rotation spot next spring. Blast one to center. There's plenty of room for Pollock. Well, the thing you like about Zach Godley is his arsenal is very simple. He, he doesn't try to do too much to use an overworked cliche, but it's just sinker cutter, sinker right cutter, fielder, sinker cutter down there at the knees. Try to get some early weak contact, and when he's on top of his game, he can do that. And they want to make sure the innings workload for Zach, as Chip Hale put it, stays at least in some semblance of being under control. But uh, they believe that you know, he's a little bit older than most rookie pitchers. He's 25. And he's a big guy, but they, they think the size and the age will have durability there, and he should be fine. And strike one to Matt Kemp, who is 0 for 2. He did rack up a lot of innings as a starting pitcher at the University of Tennessee, but we talked about that before. When you're the Friday starter for a college team, uh, it's not quite the same as taking that ball every fifth day. That's the big thing, isn't it? For folks who don't follow college baseball, what does it mean to be the Friday night starter? That's the ace. That's that's usually the best pitcher on the staff. The guy, because uh, no, normally you play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or a Friday doubleheader Saturday. And then a weekday game dropped in there somewhere Tuesday or Wednesday. So the Friday night starter is usually a conference game and you want to start your best pitcher. So the Friday night starter is definitely the ace of a college staff. And Murphy had a few at Arizona State for a long time. Yeah. And occasionally, uh, you know, a college coach will uh, have his Friday starter come back and maybe throw a couple innings of relief on a Tuesday or a Wednesday in preparation for their next start on Friday. But. For the most part, that's their job. Pitch every Friday night. You're the headliner when you're the Friday night starter, that's for sure. Justin Upton made some headlines in the second. Launched a homer into the upper deck and left his 26th of the year. Accounting for one of the two Padre runs. Good cutter there. Talking about Tyson Ross disguising his slider. It's very tough for a hitter to identify it. I think uh, Zach Godley has a little bit of the same thing going with his sinker cutter combination. Very tough for a hitter to discern which direction that ball is going to go. Good location just missed down and away. One and one. This is a little cut fastball at 91. Just enough movement to ideally take it off the barrel of the bat out toward the end of the bat and turn a line drive into an easy ground ball. I always think, and we talk about that all the time, Bob, about the idea that the sinker or the two seam fastball is the ground ball pitch, but there are lots of other ways to get ground balls sure, too. Sure. Any pitch that uh, you can get weak contact away from the barrel of the bat, either down near the hands, out near the end. Breaking pitches that have downward movement that cause the hitter to hit the top half of the baseball. A lot of different ways to get ground balls. And that one left up a bit on the outer half. He drives it to right center and it sticks in the wall. AJ going to pick it up. Doesn't really matter. He could have waved his hands up in the air, I guess, and made Upton stay at second base. In any case, he's in there with his 20 second double. I think that's about the third time this year we've seen a hitter stick a ball in the fence or underneath the fence Shortstop. in this case. Another cutter down and away. This time Upton stays on it, drives it to the opposite field with that very short, abbreviated follow through and thud right there. Stuck between the pad and the dirt. <laughs> a two out double for Upton. He's at second for Jed Jerko. The great thing about those pool seats out there. We talk about how it's great to be out at a ball game here at Chase Field in the Ramtrucks.com pool area. But when you're sitting in that front row there, along that countertop area on the bar stools, you're almost at the same level as the outfielder out there. So you really do get a sense of the, what it's like when the ball's coming right at you to be playing outfield in a big league game. That's a completely different perspective of the game. If you're used to watching in the bowl behind home plate between the bases, everything's kind of going away from you. But when you sit out there in the outfield, uh, especially near that pool, a lot of those base hits are coming right at you. And oftentimes, if you're at, at another ballpark and you're out in the bleachers, you might be 20, 25 feet up high, which is great. That's fine. But out there in the pool, you're almost at field level. 
That looked like a courtroom sketch of Tom Brady. <laughs> Give a little extra credit in art class tomorrow. It was just as good as the uh, Brady sketch, believe me. That godly strands the two out double. That looks just like Tommy Brady. Disregard. One of my favorites here, Jerry Coleman. On September 15, 2012, the bronze statue of Jerry was unveiled at Petco Park, honoring the longtime Padres broadcaster for 70 years of Major League Baseball service and his distinguished military career. He flew 120 combat missions during World War II and the Korean conflict, and one of the all time great guys to ever sit behind a microphone. And a wonderful gentleman. He was a Marine pilot with Ted Williams. Legendary Yankee infielder, longtime Padre broadcaster, the Colonel. Oh, Doctor. Hang a star on that one. Well, the Colonel would be thrilled with what he's seeing from Tyson Ross, who's retired the last seven Diamondbacks he's faced, five by strikeout. And Ender Inciarte leads off the sixth. Ender has flat out and singled one for two. He's got one of the two Diamondbacks hits tonight. I've told this story before partner, but I think it bears repeating. We were talking about Friday night starters in college baseball. Sure. You know the ace of the staff is Ender tries to bunt for a base hit fouls it off third base side. When my son Michael was going to UNLV. They always played the Cal Bears. And the Friday night starter for the Cal Bears was number one draft pick in current San Diego Padre on the DL Brandon Morrow. And I'm telling you that was uh, that was a rough night for the Rebels battling against Brandon Morrow. So they come back the next year after Brandon Morrow was drafted in the first round by the Mariners and they say well who's the Friday night starter. Oh it doesn't matter as long as it's not Brandon Morrow. Well who was it. Tyson Ross. <laughs> he went on to become a second round pick by the A's in the 08 draft. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Cal Berkeley. Well, another strikeout for Tyson Ross who is absolutely painting the corners as so many of these strikeouts have been looking. He's punched out nine. I think that's a cut fastball that time. That's a pitch that he's been working on trying to incorporate into his arsenal to go along with the heavy sinker and the hard slider that little cutter. It's a little bit faster than his breaking pitch. But he can command it a little bit better than he can the slider. Here's Goldie. Goldie is grounded out and walked. Eight in a row now, set down by Ross.
Three and oh. One thing about all these strikeouts, pitch count starting to creep up there a little bit for Ross. He's over 90 now. He walks Goldie on four pitches. Third walk issued by Tyson Ross. Let's take a look at Tyson Ross's grips on his various pitches. The four seam fastball, exactly what you would expect. You grip it across, get all four seams Let cutting through the air. That's the straightest pitch that he throws. The change up using the middle finger and ring finger. He makes the OK sign with his index and thumb. The sinker, the two seam grip on the bottom left with a lot of finger pressure on the index finger. And the slider you see really pulls down hard with that middle finger on the big seam. Gets that tremendous break on that pitch. David Peralta has struck out twice. David's got an 11 game hitting streak. David has hit safely now in 19 of his last 21 games. Batting 360 over that stretch. Trying to get the freight train on the tracks here. So if you get something in a gap right here, you get Goldie and Peralta busting around the bases. Talk about two runaway trains. <laughs> David, only Joey Votto has a higher batting average in the National League since the All-Star break. AJ on that list as well. This does get a piece. It's one and two. Grinder, how about that? We're all to grinding this one out for sure. Yeah, I've talked to Kelly Stinnett about adopting that nickname. <laughs> Center field. That's in there for a base hit. Peralta has now hit safely in 12 straight. Diamondbacks have two on and one out. And Beef Wellington on the menu. They finally got a pitch up in the zone that time. You may remember in his first at bat tonight when he struck out looking, he swung through a fastball up and out over the plate. This time he gets just enough of it to guide it out there in the center field for his first hit of the game. Driving the bus. So Goldie at second, Peralta. And first now with a 12 game hit streak and the batter with one out is Wellington Castillo who has singled and grounded out. Diamondbacks have three hits in the ball game. They've left four. Ball one. Andre Bullpen. Getting busy. The last time the Diamondbacks had some runners on base back in that third inning, the wild pitch became a, an offensive weapon for the Diamondbacks. Tyson Ross was throwing some sliders to the backstop. Moving runners up, unfortunately, couldn't come up with that big knock when they needed it. Former Oriole Bud Norris warming up as Ross throws his 100th pitch of the ball game. He's behind 2-0. 100 pitches, 61 strikes. 
Diamondbacks been trying to get to this guy all night. And this may be their moment. Three and oh. He had retired eight straight. But then the walk to Goldie, the Peralta single behind on Castillo now. Three balls and no strikes. The rookie Drury would be next. Three and one. Base hit. Andy Green is waving Goldie home. Here's the throw from Upton. It is not in time. The Diamondbacks are on the board. Wellington Castillo, the RBI single. It's a two-one ball game. Also, the pitching coach out to have a quick word. Really good secondary lead out there by Paul Goldschmidt, shuffling off the bag. Got three or four big steps off the base at second as that ball was put into play, and he'll score without a play there at the dish. Kind of an awkward slide by Goldie there at the plate. He had to go to the infield side because the throw was to the foul side of the line. Reach back with the right hand. And awkwardly got to his feet right there, grabbed the now seat of his pants, and then jogged on back to the dugout. Darren Ballsley has been heard from. Brandon Drury now, the rookie, up in a big spot. Three straight half reach for the Diamondbacks in the sixth, all with one out. Peralta and the tying run in second. Castillo, the go ahead run at first. Drury 0 for 2. Just not as sharp in this inning as he has been all night long. Peralta at second, Castillo at first. Their jerseys lined up. Those are game used, game worn, game authenticated jerseys on sale here at Chase Field. 1 0 to Drury. Able to check his swing. None the worse for wear after that somewhat awkward slide. Good spot for the rookie here, Brandon Drury. Two on, one out, ahead, two and oh. Get some of the drive right here. Gets a big double play ball to get out of the sixth, but the Diamondbacks get one to the seventh inning. San Diego leads it 2 1.
by Papa Murphy's love at 425 degrees by Phoenix International Raceway. Join PIR on November 15th for NASCAR. Visit us at phoenixraceway.com and get your tickets now. By Arizona Tire Pros. For the best selection of Continental and General Brand tires, visit your local Arizona Tire Pros location today. And by Sony Pictures The Walk in theaters this October. Just a beautiful night here in the Valley at home in the great state of Arizona. A live look at Chase Field. Roof and panels open here. It's nice to have everything open up. All that fresh air coming in. Just a gorgeous night here. And as we start the seventh inning, Corey Spangenberg leads it off against Zach Godley. Spangenberg singled and lined out to center. He's one for two. Drury will come in a step or two at third. Lines one to center again. And again, there's A.J. Pollock. It was almost a carbon copy of his last at bat to end the fourth inning. Tailing Catch line drive Austin. just to the Catch left, a straightaway center, right to A.J. Pollock. Well, here's the rookie catcher Austin Hedges pitcher spot is eighth for Pat Murphy here tonight so that's coming up next and we're going to get a pinch hitter out there and it looks like Cody Decker who after all those years in the minor leagues finally got his first big league at bat late in the ball game last night and popped up to first Hedges is over two and Decker is quite a story he's got a lot of friends and family here tonight. First major league appearance for the 28 year old Cody Decker. Just called up to the big leagues for this series. He spent seven years in the minor leagues. 28 year old rookie. Talked yesterday about what Cody Decker has been through. Nearly 3,000 minor league plate appearances without a single big league call up. He played at AAA El Paso this year. Their season ended, so he flew home to Los Angeles thinking, well, all right, that's it. Another year goes by, and I don't get a single big league look. I'm not going up, not even with September roster expansion. That's it. And Hedges has a base hit. So he flew home to L.A., was waiting for his bag at LAX, and said, get on a plane to Phoenix. You're going to the big leagues. But now that Hedges has reached, he'll be recalled. He almost got his second major league at bat right there. I'm close. And instead, Alex Dickerson will come in and he'll take the at bat, the left hand hitter. Pitch it for Tyson Ross, number one, Alex Dickerson. Alex Dickerson, six at bats in six career major league games. Chip Hale now. Matt Reynolds has been warming up at the Sanderson Ford bullpen. The left hand hitting Dickerson has been announced, and so Chip will go to the lefty. And now you might see Decker. Are you sure? <laughs> we'll find out when we come back. Good ball game here, 2 1.
left hand hitting Alex Dickerson was announced as the pinch hitter for the pitcher Tyson Ross. So he brings in Reynolds. Decker who was out there originally recalled for Dickerson. Dickerson sent back and now here comes Decker. You were right. Yeah, this is what's called burning a pinch hitter. Or Dickerson Diego, sent up there in order to try to get Alex Chip Hale to Dickerson, make the pitching change and bring in the lefty and then. Decker. Decker goes up to hit for Dickerson. Now, as a relief pitcher, you have to face at least one batter unless there's an injury. So this, uh, unfortunately, this time, uh, the edge would swing to the first base dugout, getting a right-handed batter on the left-handed pitcher. Doesn't always work out, but uh, that's what you try to do over the course of the ball game: get the favorable matchup on your side of the field. So the second big league at bat for Cody Decker popped out in his first time up last night. After nearly 3,000 plate appearances in the minor leagues. Told him he flew home to L.A. Season done. Not going to get a big league look this year. Suddenly waiting for his bag at LAX at baggage claim. His phone rang. They told him go to Phoenix. You're going to the big leagues. And now here he is. He's got good power. Hit 21 home runs at AAA El Paso this year. 75 RBIs. Big cut at that one. Two and one. We saw from Decker last night. He steps in the bucket a little bit. That front foot, the left foot, doesn't stride directly back toward the mound. It opens up a little bit toward the third base side of the field. You would assume he's looking for something middle of the plate in. He can pull to left. Swing and bunt. Reynolds has it. Underhand toss. They retire. Decky Decker hedges moves up. And that's the second out. Speaking of the minor leagues, let's uh, take a look at our State Farm Farm Report of the ball game. Visalia Rawhide, big uh, postseason series going on right now. They are trailing 4-3 in game four in the seventh inning. They lead the series 2-1. J.R. House's Rawhide. Roll Hyde. Trailing 4-3 in the seventh. They had a 3 to nothing lead in that ball game. Gonna have to come back to win it. Travis Jankowski. First round pick out of Stony Brook. Ooh. Open in from Reynolds. Jankowski had an infield single in the third. He's one for two. 77 mile an hour breaking ball that just never took the break. You can see Jankowski turned away from that pitch. The proper way to get out of the way of an inside pitch. He's only played in 20 games with the Padres called up to the big leagues for the first time in the middle of August. He can really. Run well not a whole lot of power though. We saw him run down a ball in left center field gap last night. He can cover a tremendous amount of ground out there. He's a big guy at 6 2 190. Great speed. Selfie stick. Get a better view. There's his track. Can't use one of those with your flip phone. No. Unless you come up with a selfie stick for flip phones. It's like coming up with a turbo engine for a Model T at this yeah, point. What's yeah. the point? What's the point? That is yeah. in the center. Here comes Hedges. He's going to score, and it's 3-1 Padres. RBI single for the rookie, Travis Jankowski. First baseman, Will Myers. That's yeah, pretty good at bat by the youngster to stay on that breaking ball down low and away after two of them were thrown up underneath his chin. He just sticks his shoulder right in there, drives that one back up the middle of the field for an RBI hit. Well, the Padres get that run back. Here comes Chip Hale. That will be it for Matt Reynolds. Randall Delgado has been warming up. He'll come in. We'll take a break. Diamondbacks are down 3 1.
series as those wild card leading Yankees take on the New York Mets who are running away with the NL East. Then it's the AL Central, the Royals and the Tigers in a game you can only see on Fox Sports 1. Coverage starts at 9.30 on Fox, 4 o'clock on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. The right-hander Randall Delgado in there to face Will Myers, the leadoff man for the Padres, who now lead it 3-1. Well, partner, we have a new leader in the American League West. Rangers won that game, huh? Yeah. The walk-off. 6-5, they beat the Astros. They came back to win last night's ball game. Boy, Jeff Bannister, he has got to be American League Manager of the Year. They were just left for dead, the Texas Rangers, and they have stormed back. And looking at a Mitch Moreland walk-off single. Dropped it into center field, and the Rangers. Boy, this is a big series for Texas. A lot of great games today. You've got to the Rangers and the Astros. The Pirates and Cubs played a doubleheader today. We'll split that one. As you predicted they would. Yeah. John Lester actually, uh, brace yourself, picked a guy off. What? Yeah. Although well, he kind of ran over to him. He didn't really throw it. I'll tell you what, another guy that should get American League Manager of the Year consideration, Paul Molitor and the Minnesota Twins. I mean, they've got a lot of really good young players. They looked dead in the water early in the season. It looked like it was going to be one of those rebuilding years, but uh, they just kept plugging away, plugging away. They're no. right there. Yeah. Right on the cusp. Jankowski, good speed, takes off. Meyer shoots it toward the corner. And uh, one hop into the seats. Broke his bat. You know, all the great matchups in baseball today, but the place you want to be, there's not even a ball game being played. Wrigley Field tonight, ACDC. Oh, oh, oh my. Here's the AL wild card, and right now you've got the Yankees who trail the Blue Jays in the east. You've got the Astros who now trail the Rangers in the west, and you've got the Twins who are only a game and a half off that second wild card. It's going to be a fun race right down to the wire. And that's what everybody's trying to get. We got one here thanks to you and some of your friends. A beautiful thing. It's interesting now when you get down to the last week or two. Based on those standings we just saw you're going to have the Astros and the Twins neck and neck. In different divisions. So you think we should go back to 1967 and get rid of divisions? Just have one American League, one National League, top five teams are in, and there you go. It seems to make a lot of sense. You could do that. Well, I love the second wild card because I think it puts a ton of importance on winning your division sure, as sure. it should. And you've got the Yankees desperately trying to catch the Blue Jays in the East just so they can avoid playing that wild card game. It really does, I think, add to the credibility of the division races well, even if you have a drop dead ace lined up to pitch that one game play in series now you're and you do win that game and now you're basically a man down your best pitcher won't probably pitch in the division series until game three game four maybe even game five so you want one on will myers I, I think people get upset they say well they made the playoffs they only get to play one game you have to redefine uh, your vision of what the postseason is now. There are two wild cards. Yeah, you're a postseason team, but that doesn't mean because you've got the second wild card, you're entitled to three or five playoff games. You want to avoid the wild card, win your division. That's the motivation. Two and two. And it certainly has a, added a ton of excitement. I mean, you've got that. You start off the postseason right away with two elimination games. Win or go home. That's a that's event viewing. That's a big night or two for baseball. Jankowski runs really well. Down at first, he'll be off of the pitch now. Three and two to Will Myers. There goes Jankowski and Myers waves at a fastball from Delgado who gets a big strikeout. But the Padres get another run. We stretch a chase field. Evax trail at 3 1.
was the Cox Gigalife High Speed Highlights. Justin Upton's 26th home run of the year. Highlighted the night for the Padres. They lead it 3-1 home half of the seventh. And here's the former Baltimore Oriole. It's the right-hander Bud Norris. Chris Owings will lead it off for the Diamondbacks. Norris was released last month from the O's. Padres picked him up a few days later. And he's made 15 relief appearances with San Diego so far. CO 0 for 2. He has popped up and struck out. So no luck at all with Tyson Ross. Maybe a little better luck now for the Diamondbacks against this Padre bullpen. Once again, Tyson Ross was a, a tall mountain for the Diamondbacks to climb. He has had their number this year. Travis Jankowski in center field. Shaded over toward the pool. Lots of room in left center for CO. Up there, a fastball count, two and one. And a breaking ball fouled it off. Aaron Hill. Still nursing that hamstring. Chatting up Turner Ward in there. Pitcher spot two up third in the inning, so we might see Aaron Hill. It's been a while. Aaron Hill had a bruised hand and then tweaked a hamstring, which he aggravated in a pinch hit at bat. Can't really run the bases. Hasn't been able to run really since. Uh, we were in Colorado for that doubleheader the last time we saw him. Three and two on Owings. It's really too bad. Aaron had a hot bat before he got hurt. He was really swinging the bat well. Hey, we want to send birthday wishes uh, to. Probably the biggest D-backs fan in the world, Susan Price. The players just know her as super fan. Back in the day when I was managing the team, she would obviously come to every home game. If we went on the road, she'd go down to Tucson and watch the AAA team. And if they were on the road, she'd go to El Paso to watch the AA team. Watches every pitch of batting practice, watches every pitch of the starting pitchers warm up on a given night, and watches every pitch of every ball game. And she is full volume all the time. All the, time. the best in a million universes. Susan, Shut I have down. sat with Susan at many a fall oh, league game, and she is into it, man. Oh, I mean, yes, she, she, she goes to all the Salt River Rafters games in the fall league. She watches all the prospects. She goes to every spring training game. And Susan at full volume in a fall league game with 500 people in the seat. Let me tell you, some of the players who are new to the fall league, they don't know what to do. <laughs> Here's Nick Ahmed. She is a number one D-back fan. So happy birthday, Susan. That's terrific. Well, Susan was, uh, you know, actually an unofficial coach on our uh, 2001 staff. Really? In spring training, you know, especially at the end of spring training, the rosters are cut down a little bit, and uh, occasionally you would need some extra players for minor league camp. So we would call across the street, say, send us two outfielders, two infielders, a catcher, and a left-handed pitcher. Got behind Justin Upton, and it's a 3-2 ball game. D-backs have the tying run 90 feet away with nobody out. Upton gambled and lost. It was almost an afterthought, it looked like, by Justin Upton. That sinking line drive out there in the gap in left center it looked like he was just going to back off and play it on a hop, but at the last minute he tries to come in and play it on a short hop. Gets behind him all the way to the wall, and that's some pretty good speed on the bases with CO and Nick Ahmed. That's the sixth triple for Nick Ahmed. Nick hit that bag a little hard, it looks like. That's his ninth extra base hit here in the month of September. 
He's not looking too good down there. Aaron Balsley, the pitching coach, has to talk to Bud Norris and the entire Padre infield. Just to quickly finish that story, spring training game, we call him, send us two outfielders, send us two infielders, a catcher, and a left-handed pitcher. And we didn't really care who it was. We just need bodies up here to fill out the roster and guys to be on the bench just in case. So occasionally they would send guys across the street that I wasn't familiar with. I didn't know them, so I turned to Mel. I said, you know, which one of these guys is Williams and which one's Johnson? And Mel said, well, I don't know. Let's ask Susan. <laughs> and she always knew. Johnson's number 65 and Williams is number 72. She sees everything. Infield in for the Padres. She is at every spring training workout. Every fall league game, every D-backs home game. Goes on the road sometimes. The best at a million universes. Only one on Aaron Hill. Tying right at third, nobody out. Aaron in there at 234. He's got five home runs. Aggravated a hamstring running to second base as a pinch hitter when we were at Colorado on the last road trip. And we haven't seen him since. When you have a guy that's healthy enough to swing a bat, but not really healthy enough to run the bases, this is the ideal pinch hit situation. You need to get the ball in the air to the outfield somewhere, drive that runner home from third base. The Padres playing their infield in. Maybe you drive one through there and limp your way down to first base and then give way to a pinch runner. Well, that series was the first week of September, so it's been two weeks since we've seen Aaron Hill. And he's ahead three balls and a strike. Andre Bullpen is busy. Here's the birthday girl. Zepchinski and Quackenbush. Holy Toledo. <laughs> Scrabble broke out down there in the Padres bullpen. Well, that's what they call Mark Zepchinski, the former Cardinal reliever. Scrabble. Three and one. All four. A walk, a triple, and a walk. Open up the D back seven. Off man AJ Pollock. Center off the outside Pollock. corner. Now will be taken down for the pinch runner as we anticipated. Socrates Brito coming on to run. And Pat Murphy coming out to get a new pitcher. We've got AJ Pollock coming up. The right hander Quackenbush has been warming up back there with Zepchinski. And the Diamondbacks are mounting a comeback. Don't for you go anywhere. We're back after this. For Aaron Hill, number 68, Socrates Brito. Right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season only. Diamondbacks mounting a comeback here. A run in, two on, nobody out. New pitcher for the Padres. It's the right hander Kevin Quackenbush. The 
his 52nd appearance. This guy is really tough on right hand hitters. This goes back to what we were talking about earlier, Bob, because uh, Murphy has Zepchinski, the lefty, warming up. One reason why Chip Hale told us he flip flopped. Pollock and Enciarte, one and two, was to get a better right, left, right, left, one through four. So you figure with Enciarte on deck, Quackenbush might just get the one hitter here. Yep, and then uh, probably see Zepchinski for Enciarte, and then they've got another righty just beginning to throw down in that bullpen with the unlimited rosters here in September. Nick Ahmed is the tying run at third. Socrates Brito running for Aaron Hill. The go ahead run at first. Nobody out, and it's AJ Pollock who is 0 for 2. AJ's hit safely in four straight. Fly ball, left field, up to at the track, at the wall, and it's gone. AJ Pollock, a three run homer, and it's 5 3 Diamondbacks. Hey, Bob Ridley, you're hungry. A minute. I put it away. I wasn't so sure. You missed your cue. Oh, my bad. <laughs> the 17th for AJ. It's 5 3. And here's Ender. Now maybe you let Quack and Booth face in CRT. That's Susan's birthday present right there. Yes, indeed. Great job by Socrates Brito. Pinch running right there. Oh, he was terrific. <laughs> No need, no uh, reason for Murphy to match up now. He'll leave Zepchinski in the bullpen. And then Ciarte will face the right-hander. All smiles in that D-back dugout. They waited all night for that big hit, and it finally came here in the seventh. A.J. Pollock has faced Quackenbush four times. He's taken him deep twice. That one was way up in the air. Ender single in the third. He's one for three. He's hit. Slaps it the other way. First five Diamondbacks have reached in the seventh. Take another look at AJ 17th. Oh, wow. Up and out over the plate. AJ gets full extension, a backspin, towering fly ball left field. There's Goldie. Goldie 0 for 1. He has walked twice. Don't forget, fans, tomorrow night, last game of the homestand. We're running out of home games here in 2015, and we expect confidence is high that the roof will be open. Roof and panels open tomorrow. Come on down. Last game of the series. Last game of the homestand. Robbie Ray against Andrew Kashner. And if you haven't been out to Chase Field yet this year, great seats, great food. It's going to be a gorgeous night here. Diamondbacks and Padres. Diamondback live pregame show. If you can't make it to the ballpark, comes your way at 6 o'clock on Fox Sports Arizona. Because we are hitting the road after this. Final long road trip of the year, BB. We go in San Francisco, LA, and then we finish up against the Padres at Pitco. Four in LA, right? Yeah. That's, that's yeah, yeah. There goes Inciarte. The throw from Hedges is a good one. But Ender beats it. 18th stolen base for Ender Inciarte. Short hop throw that forces the infielder to come up just a little bit with the glove to field the short hop, and then by the time Spangenberg gets the tag back down, Ender Inciarte is safely on the bag. I think we're going to have another review, however. Well, the Padres will use a challenge here.
mercy, not happy. So they will challenge the safe call at second. It's another replay review brought to us by Mitch One. Well, fans, tomorrow night, don't forget it's a, it's just so great to be here when we get, you know, mid-September or so, roof and panels open. Here's another look. What's in there? Got in there. Last game of the homestand tomorrow night, dbacks.com slash tickets. Pat Murphy just looking for some way to get an out here in this seventh inning. Started off with an Owings walk against Norris. Ahmed the triple. That got behind Upton in left center. Aaron Hill walked. Quackenbush came in, gave up the homer to Pollock, the single by Ender. And he's up there facing Goldie with a 1 1 count. Got him on the right knee there, but it looked like the foot was already on the bag. So far this inning for the Diamondbacks has been a situation of ABR. Anybody but Ross. <laughs> and they're safe at second. So the call stands. Not confirmed, but stands, meaning there was not enough clear and convincing evidence to overturn the call. He doesn't look happy. Take a look at our updated replay review standings. Brought to you by Mix One. There it is. Padres lose their challenge. One and one to Goldie and Ciarte at second. Nobody out. First base open. Three one pitch. Well, Goldie walks for the third time tonight. And the first six have reached safely for the Diamondbacks in the seventh. And here's Pat Murphy. Well, Bud Norris couldn't get anybody out. He faced three guys. Quackenbush faced three. Couldn't get anybody out. He up the big homer to Pollock. And so with left hand hitting David Peralta coming up. Looks like we'll see Mark Zipchinski. It's 5-3 Diamondbacks threatening more back after this.
pitching matchup. Series finale. Coming back live pregame show at 6 o'clock on Fox Sports Arizona. The lefty Robbie Ray for the Diamondbacks and Andrew Kashner for the Padres. Final game of the homestand. And then it's off on a long three city in LA's road trip. Left hander Mark Zepchinski on for the Padres. Acquired from Cleveland at the trade deadline. They traded outfielder Abraham El Monte to get Zepchinski, who's uh, had a rough go of it here so far. In the National League. And he inherits a bit of a mess. He's got in Cigarte at second, Goldschmidt at first. Four runs in and still nobody out. Here's David Peralta. Strike one. David singled his last time up. That extended his hitting streak. It's now at 12 games. Chopped foul. David has proven to be a perfect fit for this ballpark. The way he can pull the ball to right field for home runs or find a gap, start flying around the bases. Hitting 330 here at Chase Field this year, about a 50 point jump from his average on the road. Ender at second, Goldie at first. One two pitch. Rolls away from Hedges who had to run through Peralta to get it. It's another case. We saw that the other day of the batter just standing there setting a pick on the catcher. As is his right. Well, you're entitled to the ground in your batter's box. You don't have to get out of that catcher's way as he's chasing that wild pitch. Pick up some tip from Tyson Chandler. Sun center was in our booth early. Two and two. Got him. Peralta strikes out for the third time tonight. And that's the first down in the seventh. Right down. Here comes Pat Murphy. We're going to match him up here. You got to love September rosters. All kinds of pitching possibilities back there, as well as commercial possibilities. Let's take one now.
T-Mobile data strong fan photo. Or yeah, looks a little like gold. Pitching, number 50, Nick Vincent. A little. <laughs> He's trying with the batting stance. Thanks to all of you who tweet in your fan photos. Use the hashtag AZ Data Strong Fan. Brought to you by T Mobile. Here's the right hander, Nick Vincent. Saw him in last night's ball game. He worked one inning through 18 pitches. He'll face Wellington Castillo with two on and one out. Diamondbacks with four runs already in. They lead it 5 3. Good night so far for Beef Wellington, a single in the second. And an RBI single his last time up. He's two for three. And in at second, Goldschmidt at first. One and one. Padres have not won a series here at Chase Field in a little more than two years. D-backs trying to even this thing at a game of peace heading into tomorrow night. Sky high. Right field. Kemp. Solante at second. And he will hold there. Two outs. And the rookie Brandon Drury will be the ninth man to bat in the Diamondback seven. Brandon Drury. Brandon was up in a big spot in his previous at bat. And he ended the sixth inning with a double play. One out and two on. And now he's got two runners on and two down here in the seventh. Jankowski in center field shaded over toward the pool a couple of steps. See if Brandon, as he's done several times before, can blast one up the middle, find that gap in left center. One and one. There's a pretty good chance Vincent is not going to give him something he can pull to left field. Usually Vincent shows that fastball off the plate inside where you can't really get to it and then goes right back to that outside corner with a slider. So slowly to the right side of the field that gave Ender and Goldie big head starts on to the next base and Ender just decides to keep on rolling. Will Myers spun around to pick up the runner going from third to home and dropped the baseball. Could not make a throw home. Good aggressive base run and a single and an RBI for the rookie Brandon Drury. Goldie in at third. Ender hustling all the way. Diamondbacks have batted around here in the seventh. Here's Chris Owings who let off this inning with a walk. Talked earlier, Bob, about the way that Ender Enciarte always very aggressive on the bases, ready to take that extra base given the slightest opportunity. That was a great example right there. 
You can always stop, but if you don't run hard, you don't give yourself the opportunity to possibly take an extra 90 feet. Oh, and two. Bunt base hits this season, the most in the club's uh, single season history, and leads the National League. Nick Ahmed has six, and Renciarte has six. Chris Owens very capable of dropping a bunt down that third baseline. Solarte well back. 1 2 now, there goes Drury, and Owings strikes out. But the Diamondbacks bat around, they got a five run seventh. We start off with Nick Ahmed's RBI triple, and then A.J. Pollock launches a three-run homer, and it's 6-3 Diamondbacks. But uh, you know we'll have that conversation here in the next couple of weeks probably, and then uh, even even more in the off season to see how you know I'm preparing and how I'm feeling going into next spring training, and then uh, we'll probably have a lot of conversations leading up to spring training about what we want to do and what's best for me and what's best for the team as well. well Daniel Hudson on in relief here to open up the eighth inning. Now the Diamondbacks have a six-three lead. Or two. Any questions about the best use for Daniel Hudson in terms of his career, Bob, and the Diamondbacks' needs? Well, I mean, certainly he has starter stuff. That fastball in the high 90s may come down a little bit if he's a starting pitcher and has to be extended up to 85, 90, 100 pitches in a ball game. He might lose some of that velocity, but he's got the arsenal to be a starting pitcher and certainly the desire to be a starting pitcher. Just kind of depends on how it all best fits together next year. 28 year old right hander. Coming off two Tommy John surgeries. On Harvey Salarte leads off the San Diego eighth. Salarte 0 for 3. It was June 26, 2012, the last time Daniel Hudson started a game on a major league mound. That was the day in Atlanta when he left in the second inning with a torn UCL ligament. And he's on his way to what turned out to be two Tommy John surgeries. It's been a long road back, but he has looked terrific this year in relief. The velocity certainly is back. That's not an issue. One and two. Good start for Huddy. 
Strikes out Salarte. Daniel did start a game May 10th against these Padres here at Chase Field when they sort of had to piece together right Ham and Egg uh, starting rotation that day. They needed a bullpen ball game, and Daniel in that game went three and a third. Gave up just two hits, had five strikeouts through 56 pitches. That's as close as he's come to being a starting pitcher again. At least to this point. Here's Matt Kemp. Kemp 0 for 3. Broken back foul. Diamondbacks have a comeback here tonight. Got good news from Visalia. Solarte really jammed his knee. Striking out. There's another look. Non-contact injuries. Just oddly, he went down. Intended to by the trainer over there in that first base dugout. Vicelia Rawhide have gotten a run in the ninth inning. Kevin Crone hit a home run. They tied up that ball game at four. Trying to eliminate San Jose, so Vicelia will go to the tenth. And hopefully the Rawhide can win that game. And eliminate San Jose. Otherwise, they face a winner take all game five. Camp down 0 2. Missoula has lost tonight. They were beaten by Idaho Falls 5 3 the final. So that series is tied up a game apiece. Two up, two down, two strikeouts. And here comes Justin Upton. Good stuff from Huddy tonight. The fastball's explosive. That slider's got some late downward movement. He's even thrown a change up in the ball game here tonight. There have been guys who've had double Tommy John before. Huddy's not the only one. But uh, all those guys, it seems, have run into issues as they try and come back. Huddy has been the exception, but he's been used differently. That's going to be the, the big question moving forward. What's the best thing for his arm? Well, the way this game evolves, you wonder if we're not too far away from a situation where your starting pitcher will be asked to go once through the lineup. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, give us three solid innings, bring him back three days later, do it again. Or go the other way and go to a six man rotation. Team's already kind of flirting with that now this year. There's Dr. Ed Lewis, the director of analytics. There's no question the numbers back this up overwhelmingly that the third time through the order against a starting pitcher, his opponent batting average just skyrockets. So you can make a pretty convincing case that no starter should mm -hmm. face a lineup more than two times through. Get a glove on the short hop, keep it up in the air, but no chance to get Upton, who's got his third hit tonight. So Upton now a triple shy of the cycle. You know, Justin Upton hits a ground ball. It always short seems to have a lot of top spin. Sure. Consequently, that last bounce always comes up just a little bit higher than you anticipate. Good choice that time by Brandon Drury. Didn't have a good grip on that baseball. It was going to be a E5 throwing error had he tried to wing that one across the infield, so he just hung on. Jed Jerko 0 for 3. Backs it out to right. Hands in front of NCRJ for a base hit. Back to back, two out singles for the Padres. Second baseman, Corey Spangenberg. Corey Spangenberg now. Mike Harkey going to make a mound visit here. Because everybody remembers how Daniel Hudson was a, a key member of that 2011 
division championship rotation. 16 and 12. 33 starts they made. 28 decisions and 33 starts. We'll tell you that uh, he was getting the ball and pitching deep into the ball game. Suffered that initial injury in June of 2012. Brad Ziegler will start warming up at the Sanderson Ford bullpen. Walked off the mound at Turner Field with a torn UCL. Needed Tommy John surgery. And then Huddy in 2013 was just about at the tail end of a grueling year long rehab process, right on the brink of returning and retore the ligament while pitching in a minor league rehab game. And so a second Tommy John was required. But he is back and throwing harder than ever here this year. Here's a strike at 97 to Spangenberg. And Huddy will tell you he has really appreciated the way the Diamondbacks have handled his situation. He said it's all a player could really ask for. That's for the organization to be honest with you, keep you involved in the discussions, not just tell you, okay, this is what you're going to do. He really feels like he's been part of the process. He does not want an ultimatum, and the Diamondbacks have certainly not done anything close to that. He has been a big part of all the discussions about moving forward. This does get a piece. One and two. <laughs> Tying run at the plate, two outs. A ball and two strikes. Two is low. It's a full count. Austin Hedges, the catcher, is due up next. Brett Wallace is in the on deck circle. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Here it is. There go the runners. Ball four. The bases are loaded. Daniel Hudson came in strikeout strikeout got Salarte Kemp but singles by Upton and Jerko followed by the walk to Spangenberg and that's going to bring out Chip Hale. Waiting for Wallace to be announced. So it looks like a potential four out save for Brad Ziegler. As Chip Hale is going to his bullpen here. 6 3 in the eighth, back in a moment.
backs up 6 3, but the Padres have the bases loaded in two outs, and here is Brad Ziegler for the 61st time this year. He'll try and lock down a four out save. Brett Wallace has been announced as the pinch hitter for the catcher, Austin Hedges. And Wallace, the former ASU Sun Devil, has been outstanding in this role this year. Double switch for Chip Hale. Jake Lamb takes Wallace. over at third. He'll bat ninth. Pitcher spot now sixth in the Diamondback order. So here's Wallace. He's at 324 for the year. He's got four home runs. Three of those four homers have come as a pinch hitter. He's batting 359 in a pinch hit role this year. He's got Upton at third. Jerko at second. Spangenberg is the tying run at first. Two outs here in the eighth. And there's ball one. Two and zero. Wallace didn't make his Padres debut until the middle of June, but he has been a very effective extra bat for Pat Murphy. That one gets behind Castillo. Upton will come in and score to make it a 6-4 ball game. And that's trouble. Now the tying runs are in scoring position and a 3-0 count on Wallace. Wild pitch. Yeah, Brad just pulling them all over the place out there right now. Can't seem to find a good release point. Strike. Pitcher spot is up next for the Padres. That's eighth in their batting order, and Melvin Upton Jr. is in the on deck circle. Got Jerko at third. Spangenberg, who runs very well, is the tying run at second. That's in there for a strike. Hold on there, Brett. Three and two. And somebody's just been ejected from the Padre dugout. Alfonso Marquez has run Pat Murphy. Marquez gave Brad Ziegler the strike call that time. Murphy barking apparently from the dugout. Somebody over there anyway. And Padre Skipper looks like has been ejected. Part of the argument, I'm sure, is how do you know it was B that was yelling? We got 700 guys over here in this first base dugout. Could have been any one of them. How do you know it was B? I'm going to guess that by the eighth inning, Alfonso Marquez has heard a lot of Pat Murphy. Yeah. Tom Halley, the crew chief, going to come in from first and uh, escort Murphy out of here. Let's take a look at that 3 1 pitch. Yeah. Very borderline. Call that a pitcher's pitch. Oh, Brad's a pitcher. Fifth ejection for Pat Murphy. This is only his 80th game as a manager. What are you saying? Quite a ratio. Two outs, three and two. Got him. Brad Ziegler puts out the fire, ends Pat Murphy's night. 
And Wallace will continue the conversation with Alfonso Marquez. But the Padres do get one. And we'll go to the home half of the eighth. Good one here at Chase at 6 4 Diamondbacks. Jody Jackson, Joe Borowski, as we get you set for Diamondbacks Live, presented by CenturyLink, our post-game show, Brad Ziegler getting out of a mess there. But how about the Diamondbacks? Once Tyson Ross was out of the game, he was cruising. It was a whole new ball game. Anybody but Tyson. Bob said it. Diamondbacks batters, they wanted anyone in there and sure did come out on fire in the seven. Two-run lead for the D-backs and a chance to pile on a few more, guys. Thank you, guys. Diamondback Live post-game show follows our ball game here. New battery. For the Padres after they hit for the catcher Hedges. Joaquin Benoit will be the new pitcher. A 2-4-1 ERA is 62nd appearance. And the rookie Rocky Gale takes over behind the plate. And now everybody's going to go over the uh, cards here. Alfonso Marquez wants to make sure they flip the, the two spot. The pitcher had been batting eight for the Padres. And the pitcher will now bat seventh in the San Diego order. And Gale, the catcher, will hit eighth. Well, now they switched it back, and that's what the confusion is. So those changes are straight up. Nick Ahmed leads off the bottom of the eighth. Nick, a RBI triple his last time up. He's one for three. One and two. Keeping Rocky Gale busy back there. Rocky Gale, 27 year old rookie, called up to the big leagues for the first time last week. He was at Triple A El Paso all year. He 307 in the Coast League this season.
2 2 pitch. I'll tell you what, Bob. Rocky Gale really uh, spreads out those legs. He's got a wide base and really gets down there low. I was just thinking the same thing. Uh, really a wide setup after he gives a sign to his pitcher and assumes his defensive position. His feet are spread wide apart. Boy, that puts a lot of pressure on the inside of your knees, the inside of your thigh muscles. From the University of Portland, a 24th round pick by the Padres five years ago. Another 2 2. Ahmed not chasing, the count is full. Jake Lamb double switched into the ball game is on deck. Here's a good look at Rocky Gale. Three and two. Hansenberg at second throws him out. One away. Take a look at our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool plays of the game. Bob, it's the D back seven. Yeah, why not? The team has been very quiet offensively against Tyson Ross. Once they got the big right hander out of the game, it was a feeding frenzy for the D backs offense. A five run Arizona seventh. It took a 6 3 lead. Padres got one back in the top of the eighth, so it's 6 4. One out. Here's Jake Lamb, 278 and six home runs. Jake had a good night last night, two for four with a double. Jake's had some good swings lately. He hasn't always gotten good results, but. Uh, much more on pitches recently bat much flatter through the hitting zone recently giving himself a better chance of putting that ball in play with authority. Yeah, it's been a really good stretch here for Jake Lamb since late last month. In fact, uh, you go back his last 21 games. He's hit about 320. And is walking more often lately too. the gone base percentage is up. There's the strikeout. Two down. I know this will be of interest to you, partner. We've got an update on our season giveaway. Yeah. 82 times now the Diamondbacks have hit a homer in the ball game, so that's good for a jumbo jack with a large drink person. <laughs> 59th game now scoring five or more runs. So of course that's three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink of Taco Bell. 28 times the Diamondbacks pitchers have punched out at least 10 opposing batters. That's a Circle K fountain drink. And with a win tonight it'd be the 69th time you get half off your Papa John's tomorrow. I'm stuffed. <laughs> we'll go to the ninth. d backs looking for a four out save from Brad Ziegler at 6-4.
the summary Diamondbacks with a five run seventh. Highlighted by A.J. Pollock's three run homer his 17th of the year. Juan Brad Ziegler who got the final out of the eighth will come on to get three outs here in the ninth and try to close out a 6-4 D-backs lead. Melvin Upton Jr. will hit for the pitcher. 244 in his first season with the Padres. He's got five home runs. Nice play down there. Gary Gagne. Upton has actually been able to salvage something from this year. It was a miserable start. But he's hitting just over 260 since the All-Star break with three home runs. Won a game for him not too long ago. Reunited with his brother Justin. Melvin missed the first 58 games this year of the Padres and inflamed left foot. He was out all spring and into the summer. Didn't make his Padre debut until June 8th. Right to Nick Ahmed. On the way. Here's the rookie center fielder, Travis Jankowski, who's got two hits. Center fielder, Travis Jankowski. Diamondback Live post game show follows our ball game. Bill Borowski standing by with Joni Jackson. I guess uh, EB Lightning has the night off. Yeah, Lightning had a big night last night. Really? Literally Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the ballpark, it seemed like. Jake Lamb in on the grass at third for Jankowski, who has very good speed. AJ, a little shallow in center, shaded over toward left center field. 2 0 pitch. In there for a strike. Going to talk to Steve Cobb, Arizona Fall League director, tomorrow. He'll join us in the booth. You'll see Travis Jankowski playing in the Fall League this year. Going to have two teams this year, BB. I don't know if you got the word two teams. That's a. Salt River Fields this year. So we'll be busy over there. Every day. Be a ball game there pretty much every day. Oscar Hernandez will play in the Fall League. We'll talk to Steve Cobb, the Fall League director, tomorrow. Their season starts soon. Susan will be there. She's at every Salt River Rafters game. I've sat with her at a bunch of games. That's where we saw a lot of Enrique Burgos last fall. Brandon Drury as well. Peter O'Brien all played the fall league last year. Nice foul. Good chance for Kathy Grant right there. Nice job, Kathy. All right. She's had a quiet night. Gary's been busy occasionally. Nice moss. Bouncer shortstop Bob and has to hurry. And he pulled Goldie off the bag. Jankowski can really get up that line. And Nick knew it. And let's see if Chip Hale wants to challenge. Glenn Sherlock on the phone with Alan Campbell. He backs won a challenge earlier in the ball game. Nick Ahmed always gets rid of the ball quickly, but when he knows he has a fast runner, he turns it up an extra notch. Yeah, he's off the bag. Yeah, it looked like Goldie couldn't quite get the toe back on the bag. That is E6. Error on Ahmed. Don't see that too often. So Will Myers tying run at the plate, one out. It was only the 13th there this season for Nick Ahmed and when you consider how many balls he handles just on a routine basis at shortstop and then all the balls he gets to that other shortstops do not get to that's a pretty remarkable number. His defense through all the offensive ups and downs has never wavered this year. In fact it's been spectacular. In fact. Talk about this all the time with Dr. Ed Lewis. If you look at the defensive analytics 
Nick Ahmed is the fourth best defensive player in the major leagues at any position. That's according to defensive runs saved. You got Kevin Kiermeyer, the great outfielder for the Rays. And you've got Angelton Simmons, the Braves shortstop, Brandon Crawford, the Giants shortstop, and then Nick Ahmed. 1 1 to Myers. Nick, one more time, slow roller. Boy, you can get rid of that ball so quickly. the ball on his left foot and throws before his right foot even comes down. So Jankowski moves up to second two outs. You know, Harvey Salarte tying run at the plate. He's 0 for 4. Seemed to tweak his knee striking out in his last at bat against Daniel Hudson. Larte a switch hitter. He's best from the left hand side. Adding 280 as a lefty. That's where he's got nine of his 12 homers. It's Brad behind 2 0. Padres tonight have out hit the Diamondbacks 9 to 8, but they trail it 6 4. Oh, that might squeak through, and Owens is on it, but he's got no play. Good job by CO CO to at least keep Jankowski at third there. But now the tie runs are aboard with two outs. What infielders are taught with a runner at second base if you can't field it cleanly at least knock it down and keep it on the infield to hold that runner at third base. That's a really nice play by CO. Man he had to cover a lot of ground and reach behind him to make that play and keep it out of center field. And now they'll deal with Matt Kemp. Jankowski at third. Solarte. Tying run at first, two outs, and Kemp steps in. He is 0 for 4. He has struck out twice. Good numbers for Brad against Matt Kemp. One for 16, six strikeouts. Advantage Ziegler here. Kemp third in the league at RBIs, right behind Goldie. There's a strike. Alfonso Marquez. Matt Kemp shaking his head. Well, the red seams caught the edge of the black. Sure did. Outfielders are back. A high chopper in the hole. Ahmed has to hurry. And Nick throws him out. And the Diamondbacks come back and win the ball game. They get that five run seventh and they snap the three game losing streak. Well, some stellar defense in this ball game tonight. Really evidenced here in the ninth inning. All three outs reported on ground balls to Nick Ahmed, who made outstanding plays all three times. Brad Ziegler appreciates it. And Brad gets the four out save. Diamondbacks get the win 6 4. Let's start Diamondbacks Live. Post game show is on the air. Joe Borowski standing by with Jody Jackson. Jody. Thanks a lot, Steve. Yeah, Joe, comeback win here. And the guys mentioned that five run seventh. And then, you know what? It got a little dicey there. But Brad Ziegler, 24th straight save, 26th on the season. Yeah, what looked like the Diamondbacks were doing nothing offensively, finally turned it up. But they got contributions out of the bullpen as well to hold down this victory. Really good job tonight. Very nice way, too, to bounce back after game one. So, post game show coming your way. Roof was open tonight. 
start of fall, in my opinion, here in Arizona. A 6-4 to four victory. We'll have reaction from inside the clubhouse. Kate Longworth will have interviews both on the field and in the clubhouse. We'll hear from manager Chip Hale. Joe Borowski will break it down. Bob Brenly will join us as well. It is all coming your way next right after the break. So stay with us on this Tuesday night. The D-backs rally in the seventh and get the victory.